Make sure your mic's on. Oh, hold on. Folks, this is always our, our show around here. We're never truly 100% prepped. Like we should be. This is why no one sponsors us. <laughs> there you go. Let You're let live. Oh, let there we see. go. Can I hear myself? Yeah, rock and roll, folks. Part of this is my fault. It is, James. Part of this is my fault. All right? I decided to take a little napsky, okay? So I get a little snooze in so I'd feel fresh. And I was late. So, said, uh, hola, senor y señor. Taco Bell. No, man. Oh. It's Strange so Things Radio. It's Strange Things Radio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're here to have some fun. Zizakis. Fun, fun, fun no, for um... everyone. It's Strange Things Radio. On Cinco de Mayo, it's Strange Things Radio. Cha cha cha. And did you bring the laptop like I told you to? No. no I well, didn't. then you're not going to be able to see I got to keep an eye on this. Oh, my God. So, folks, see, now Eric is blind. He I'm, can't. I'm, I'm blind. I can't see you. <laughs> see, folks, this is. You don't even know what's happening in the, in the, right now. I'm holding the mic in my hand because I, the stupid thing fell off I, my boom mic. First of all, everybody's got to give the Jamester. Did you know I said the Jamester? Did you? <laughs> folks, I'm just going to have to the hold way the mic. You're holding that mic, you look like such a nerd. I'm just going to be. I know, because it won't again. stay. It's like a stick in the hole and it falls out. Oh, I, I wanted to add, you know, you didn't tell me. Did you celebrate with the fourth be with you? Oh, yeah. Please. I had my favorite Star Wars shirt on. I texted a whole bunch of people I know saying, May the 4th be with you. Yes, I did. And by the way, since that was May 4th, today is, and I had to give it up to um, Gen Z said this to me. What? Today's the 5th, right? Cinco de Mayo. No. What? It's Sith Day. Oh, my gosh. Fifth, Sith, Sith. May the 5th, Sith. So. Do, do, do. <laughs> So folks, you are uh, unbelievable, oh, man. So now I gotta get. Oh, gotta, all right. So hold on. Uh, so you, uh, what you're doing? You're gonna go get another. Uh, uh, okay, okay. Okay. So folks, listen. How you doing, man? How you doing, strangelings? How are you doing? My week was awesome. I mean, I had a great week. Digging the new gig. Digging uh, the people that I work with. Uh, hey, oh, by the way, James. All right, Billy, the guy I work with. He is Techie Yoda. The guy is unbelievable. I mean, oh, oh, oh. so he just sits there and I kind of sit, you know, and with my legs crossed. Hum, speak to me, Techie Yoda. Speak to me. It's just one of those. It's just one of those days, those days, Friday. Friday. Did I just call for what, What's wrong, James? Are you Where's okay, the buddy? Boom, Mike is. Oh, folks! Listen, I gotta tell you, poor James. We have got to be gentle with him today, all right? Because he has been somewhat traumatized. Have you not, James? It was it was it was trauma day today, and and I I, I feel bad for him, you know, because we love him, right? And James, you know, you know, I care about your brother, all right. He was, let's just say, he was engaged in consuming his favorite meal. Can I, can, oh, yeah, can, yeah. Am, I, am, I, am I a little bold in saying that, James? Yes. No, uh, you're not bold by saying that. Okay. It's the truth. All right. So, um, I can't hear you, bro. So, I, 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 did you take yourself down? Yeah. Okay. That way. So, James, that had, that, that's got to be a record time for you to repair everything. Dude, you amaze you me, go. man. You, you know, you amaze me. I mean, th- 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 that's all there. And look at the D-man. Look at the D-man. Don't, d- quickly, don't, yeah, don't stare at him because he's looking at you 
wondering when you were going to take care of his B request. Oh, it, it's coming. It's coming. I know. And and I think, and, and I'm, well, what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to give him some petting. You know, he's, yeah. he's a good pooch. So, tell your good story. Pooch. So, what story? I got no story. What, what, what story? You're talking about the, me being my favorite place. Oh, oh, okay. So, James is m- mid-wing, right? You were oh. mid-wing bite. Yep. And what happens? He's, he gets a call. And we're not going to go into details, but James being the, the, the kind of person that he is, the, the, the kind of individual that takes care of his people, his customers, he is very customer service oriented. He believes in extending himself to assist in the benefit of others. James, did you like that? Oh, I know. You, you, I did, that's, uh, that was am, good. Am I selling you, buddy? Am I You're selling, selling good. So, uh, and, um, but needless to say, he got to what? The circle jerk? Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> James, I'm so sorry, buddy. It's all right. But by uh, the way, I got to say something real quick. Can I, can but, I just yeah, 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 you can keep it there. Right, cool. So for those who haven't been to the para X Radio Network dot com, yeah. which is now the full full Dude, name. This looks cool. This they looks cool. They have revamped the They've website. Revamped it, and looks it looks nice. Killer. So for those killer. who killer, if you're listening to us live, go yeah. to Para X Network. Excuse me, Para X Radio Network dot com. And wait, wait, uh, why am I looking at Para hyphen X? Uh, garbage. It, it does both. Okay, but so. So, Make it easy for them. So, so people, yeah, yeah. So or let's go paradisex dot com. Yeah. Or either way, um, the website's awesome looking. Um, and, and listen, I'm, I'm uh, far be it from me to throw out uh, a free endorsement. But if anybody has had the loaded taco burrito from T Bell, may I say it is killer. <laughs> It is a burrito supreme with crunchy things inside, man. And for a buck forty nine, you can't beat it, man. You just can't beat it. I mean, it was killer. So I had I had a couple of them. So my stomach is kind of doing cartwheels, but I really can't, you know, eat Mexican food without that happening. But I just wanted to say that in honor of Cinco de Mayo, which means taco salad by the bay. Did you know that? What? Cinco de Mayo. No, it means get drunk by noon. No. Yeah, jump by noon on May 5th. taco salad by the day, by the bay. Especially how apropos with us being here in Florida. (laughs) I mean, that's all there is to it. So, uh, uh, no mods, free day. Hey, Sherry. See, nobody's even said hello, James. No. See, we're irrelevant. We're irrelevant. They said hello to us. The strangelings come in. They hang out. They shoot the crap. And they're just like, yeah. They come to see us. We'll just let them ramble in the background. And, oh, James, do we not have a cool guest today? Oh, yes. Tonight. Yes. All right, James, first of all, you got to understand. This is James' redemption, right? Considering the circle jerk cluster snuck oh. uh, cluster, cluster, cluster that he had a big time problem with, tonight's his redemption. Because tonight at 11 o'clock, we're going to have an individual who basically, James, would you go so far as to say he's a Bigfoot uh, expert? Slightly. Slightly. <laughs> and, and, and James yeah. literally, oh, what? Did you say something? <laughs> Shut up, cat. <laughs> Cat's always giving it to me. Why do you always give me the business? I, you know, hello, Snoogy Goo. Hug Snoogy Goo. Hello, hello, hello. Do you, hello. Remember that? do you remember that, James? Do it again. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, yeah, that's a three. Hello. Stooges. I want to see if they would know. Oh, man. I'm not supposed to. Sorry, folks. Don't pretend I said. always ruin it, bro. I know. I know. Because I get so Come excited. Come on, man. I get excited, too. Did you notice I'm in shorts? Uh, my favorite t shirt. Yes. And I have black socks on. <laughs> yeah. I, I have. Is that the Cramden look? I have. <laughs> <laughs> buddy, I have embraced my geekdom. Honestly, I've embraced my geekdom. I don't really care. All right. I don't care if people say I'm a geek. Oh, I, I, I really don't uh, care what happened. What happened? Well, bro? they're saying they can't really hear us. They can't hear us? Fred can. Yeah, Fred. So uh, I'm, I'm cranking up the levels, wait, folks. WTH, uh, sorry, I disconnected. Okay. Who's Dip Bunny? I see a lot of new people out there, man. Folks, do you know us? Do you know our show? We are Strange Things Radio. 
Did you get that? I was a little poetic there. Oh, I know. So, you, so and, and, and what it is is, yes, we dig the paranormal, but we dig things, everything that is strange. Have a nice day. Are you boogieing, Dip Bunny? Oh, hell no. Hell no. Stay with the show. Yeah. I didn't. Hey, that's not copyrighted. <laughs> Mark it. <laughs> Wait. That's okay. Oh, oh, look. It's a woman, Eric. Yes, and I dig women. <laughs> All right, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. And James and I have debated whether or not we should set up a cam and bring in a uh, a, a oh, stripper I've... pole because I am Erico Erotico, full of lovins, ready to entertain the blue hairs at all the radio, all of the uh, um, retirement communities. And I make a pretty good supplemental income doing so. Uh, I have a little stamp where they just sign the check over and we're ready to go. So, uh, Snoogie Goo, uh, uh, Dip Bunny. Uh, James, do you, right, first of all, will you hang out with us, folks? Don't go anywhere tonight. We're going to be here for two hours. Just be, become part of the gang. We are the gang of strangelings. We are strange. Eric may have his purple suit on. I always have my purple suit on. Freddie, what are you talking about, man? Is the sound better? Uh, wait, I, just I know a guy named James at ST. Oh, that's you. Me. Oh, that's you. Well, dude, that's let, let me know. <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure our listening ons can hear us quite you know, finally. You, you know, you care about our listeners, dude. Did that? I think that is so special, man. It was fine. We were messing with you. Oh, see, well, I didn't see, know that. Oh, now she cats turn into an equal opportunity messerer, messer, messer, messer with them. So, anyway, so anybody got anything fun planned this weekend? I am going to in the morning go because I screwed up my. My audio jack on my phone, and I got to listen to tunes. I got to listen to tunes. I still haven't fixed it. So all I got to do is go down to South Sarasota, drop the thing off. It, it pisses me off, though, that I can't disable my email on an Android. I have to literally remove the damn account. So and I lose all my emails in there just because, you know, I don't want people basically stealing my, the database of fine women that I've known over the last couple years. Right, I'm just saying. Not trying to come off as a gigolo or anything because I'm very, very conscious of issues that arise from being such. I don't want to go to the bathroom and scream in pain. You know what I mean? <laughs> sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm going to keep it clean because I always keep it clean. So, um, but but uh, let's see. Who's this die crossover? That's okay. And we got Google Cute. Yeah, Google Cute, I bet you. And we got the Lover Dip. We got the Parola underscore Negra. Don't try to pronounce this crazy name. I, I, I know, but it's just, you know, it's just, I'm glad that you're hanging out with us, man. This is Strange Things Radio. We talk about things that are strange. If you want to listen to expert commentary, expert hosts, we are blowing there, bro. Do you, does it look like we're blowing big time? Are we? So um, if you want to listen to expert hosts speak, well, from sometimes the floor we, have, well, we have someone on tonight. I'm talking about us, bro. Oh, us? No, we're just two us. idiots two, with two, microphones. Two, two idiots. They sat there and said, we'll let the special needs guys come in and give them a segment on the, on the network. <laughs> you know, I, I, I think, well, don't, they get, don't they get supplemental income <laughs> from the state to let us do We need to get some from. <laughs> 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 you imagine filing the report? Uh, we'll let them have some money, please. Why? We're two idiots on the radio. We need money. <laughs> Uh, our radio IQ is about 50. <laughs> they, you know, it's, it's, they, they listen to other shows and go, wow, these other hosts, man, they're smart. They know their stuff about the paranormal. Who are these goofballs that they gave a 10 to 12 slot on Friday night? What the hell's the deal? And it's just like, well, you know, because we went in, we said, excuse us, can we, uh, can we, can we be on the radio, please? Uh, we, we promise not to, to, to be weird and stuff like that, but we just like talking to people and people listen to us and, you know, throw ideas out. And, dude, if I got to listen, if I got to look at this graph all night, oh, I'm crazy. <laughs> and I got to see what the people, now, are we good with the sound? It looks like we're blowing out. Are we okay? Yeah, we're going on. I'm gonna just, I'll check out the web. The, the broadcast side? Okay. Man, why am I echoing? Can you dude, all I know is, is you, you, dude, you got that golden voice, man. There's nothing wrong with it. Don't worry about that. Listen, you have got to be more confident in yourself. Oh, man. I am. Oh, no, I'm you got to be more confident. Wait, I think there's a chat room crossover. Someone ripped open the space time. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Come on, CC. It's not that bad. It is strange hour. Yes, it is. Try the old, like, CC. I'm, C- I'm curious whether you'll show as a mod here. Okay. Yeah. And, I, and listen, folks, I promise I will not keep reading the chat. But I dig what you people talk about. It's just when you go over and start talking about these uh, obscure uh, <clears throat> topics that have nothing to do with what we're doing, then I'm just like, okay, are we boring you? Are we boring you? And, and we, we re- I, at that point in time, I'm just like, okay, I'll, I, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Did I tell you I had a, a double taco burrito? Did I tell you about that? See, I got it on my mind now. I got it on my mind. Right, because you said you're gassing. I might. <laughs> I might. <laughs> so if I start seeing some lean twos over here, we're in trouble. Dude, 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 listen. They are killer. They're really good, man. And I'm not really big for Taco Bell, but I'm sitting there thinking, okay, it's Cinco de Mayo. You know, I'm going to sit there and celebrate and have myself a nice taco burrito. And that's exactly what I did, and it was killer. And I got it on my mind, so I might just cruise instead of hitting forty or forty third to make a left to go to my house. I think I'm going to continue on, on on Manatee Avenue, stop at that local T Bell, get a couple of those. I can have a, have a couple of those, and then go home and take my Melan- my Lanta. So I cannot do I cannot do Taco Bell anymore. Why? Well, one time I had this uh, something, and I was sick for like two days. So, yeah, uh, it was crazy. I like those chalupas. See, I get stuck in the whole marketing thing. All I got to hear is that sound, you know, run for the border and blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden, you know, I'm I'm reeled in like a big-ass fish. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, man, that's that's when I'm checking things out. Look, at CC took off. She's like, I can't listen to this stuff anymore. Uh-huh. Wait, try using the chat tab at the bottom, then go to the main. See, all right. what the no, hell are they this, talking about, Because man? there's different. There's different what? Right. Folks, we're slightly having difficulties. No, we're not having difficulties. What are you talking about? Everything's fine, man. Everything's fine, buddy. It's beautiful, dude. It's beautiful. It's Friday. It's yeah. the weekend. I'm so glad the weekend is here. Tomorrow, I'm going to drive down to Sarasota, get my phone fixed. Wait, oh my gosh. You know what? Do we have two separate chat rooms? I think so. I mean, we have one chat room, we have another. So how many uh, people are actually yeah. hanging out there, man? Well, this is the one that, as long as we see Rebecca in one, then we should be good. That's well, the one. Well, what happened? To, are, so are the other people listening or no? Uh, James, James. Well, yes, listen. <laughs> I don't know. This is the one that we... <laughs> well, Micah's mom's there. Ra Ruth, is Kat, there. I see. Jake, Joe. The Moofster is there. Moof. Yeah. But wait, who's... Uh, all right, now, now people are starting to filter. They're Sherry. Okay. Uh, refresh the page. We did. Refresh the pay the fa- the, the the page. That's what I just did to your side. I, I did our We're good. Good. But listen, folks. I got. I listen. I, you, I'm going to sit there and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clap and I'm going to applaud the people at uh, at Para X because they did an awesome job, an awesome revamp on this web. Did they not, James? James, 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 James. I, I was up to I, I just want to make sure you were there, yeah, man. I'm there, here. I just want to make sure you're there. I mean, it's just, you know. But you, you got to sit there and say that the website is awesome. I'm happy. And, um, you know, so. But, folks, you got to hang out with us because tonight we're going to be talking about Bigfoot, one of James's favorite topics. I mean, what is it about big, tall, hairy things that turn you on? Well, that's why you're my friend. Because you're big. Hey, I'm not saying you're so hairy. Excuse, excuse, excuse me, excuse me. Yeah. As I used to be, I'm more, I'm, I'm more felt. Come on, you got no. at least own me that, man. You, you've gotten skinny. I say, I say that, but yet I'm sitting there talking about eating taco burritos and bungee. Uh, you know, <laughs> two fits. You must have quit. Did you? Have- <laughs> Bigfoot, whatever, soup. whatever, whatever. Yeah, uh, Bigfoot. I got it. I got it. I got it. There we go. I, I caught. I caught the nexus. But tonight we're going to be talking about Bigfoot. So that means James is going to be giddy. He's going to be all happy because he loves Bigfoot. Anything and everything Bigfoot. And I got to be honest with you too. I would, uh, James. We have got take. I'll take my family. We'll take your family. Let's go up to Georgia for a weekend. We're only eight hours away from the. No, but see, this guy's based here in Florida. The stuff he's finding is here in Florida. In Florida, 
That's what makes well, it the, really the, more The exciting. only thing is, buddy, I don't want to be walking around in the freaking woods in Florida. You have coral snakes. You have various species of spiders that love to bite you and end your life. There are alligators no, that are close. I, I, you know, there's a multitude of snakes. Dude, I don't like going in the, in the woods down here in Florida. Now, I'll go in the woods in upper Minnesota and just deal with the the deer flies and the mosquitoes you know i mean i'm, I'm not afraid there but down here dude you walk into the freaking uh forest or any kind of wooded area you take your life into your own hands i don't want to do that man i want to stay alive and enjoy life so listen what we're going to do is we have got to come together as a unit and get the fans together and say, listen, we're going to go up to Georgia. And what is it? Is it Georgia? Is it the what's what's right above Georgia? Right above Georgia, it's Tennessee. Dang and then what's the Kentucky. next state? No, not Kentucky. Yeah, Georgia, no, Tennessee, Kentucky. Kentucky. No, no, I'm saying further west. For I'm for further east. So you have North Georgia. Carolina, South Carolina. Well, it's okay, so, south so is it is it is it South Carolina Georgia yeah. border where they have that national forest where there's all kinds of Bigfoot sightings? Yes, but we've got to go there, dude. We have got to sit there and just say, okay, we're going to pack up the camper and we're going to go. Uh, we're going to go hang out. And who's got a camper? I'm just, it's a phrase, James. Oh, okay. It's a phrase. Can, you know, we, what we'll do is we'll take some tents, okay? But we are taking a firearm. I'm just telling, I'm telling you that right now because I just, I don't want to be. So if you saw Bigfoot, be, would you really, I mean, if you had a dead eye on Bigfoot and you had a pistol or a gun, would you shoot it? Hell no. Now, if it looked at me, licked its chops, and started walking towards me, I'm taking home a souvenir, a big, hairy <laughs> souvenir. I'm not going to sit there and. Listen, there have been stories now. We've talked about this. You know, long time ago, there were stories about how Bigfoot would come into where there were Indians and they would come into their, their tribe and take babies and for the purpose of consuming. Now, I don't know if that was just, those were just tales, but would you agree that, yes, Bigfoot are? Are uh, are carnivores? No. Well, see, there's, there's. The, I think they are. They, well, they, well, they, they they, they've had reports where they chase people, well, they chase rabbits and deers and all that other stuff. I think you would have to be because one of the things is, man, I am like echoing. I don't know why, dude. I'm, I'm like, d- d- look, listen. Can you hear the echo? Or just I, me? It doesn't matter because you're, you're 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 kicking butt, man. Okay, you sound so, great, so don't worry about right. it. Don't be so self conscious. The, the size of a Bigfoot would have to require <laughs> calories. I mean, we're talking on the fact of. You know those those six hundred pound my six hundred pound life kind of people. The the intake, tends. dude. If these are eight nine feet with broad shoulders and thick, we're so how much upwards of a, of a ton? No, what I'm saying is well, you know, maybe not a ton. Maybe oh, thousand yeah. pounds. Yeah, is that maybe thousand, thousand pounds? Is it thousand I thought two thousand. I thought it was two thousand pounds. You're right. Okay, but what so I'm half saying a is ton. those people who are like six hundred pounds on those TV shows, they eat like five to eight thousand calories a day, but they don't move. Right, these guys do. And they you calling them guys? What are they? What, are they part of your clique? <laughs> well, you and the Bigfoots. You and the Bigfoots yeah. hang out. Yeah, that's the new club. Listen, could you imagine meeting one like Henry and Harry, <laughs> Harry and the Hendersons? Come on, man. <laughs> one with, with a sweet disposition like that. You know, I mean, come on. So, <clears throat> but I mean, I wouldn't. Uh, I, I wouldn't mess with it. I mean, uh, that's just. I mean, if one was looking at me and I had a gun and it kind of started to come at me in an aggressive way. Well, James, would you let it beat the piss out of you? I'm just asking you. Would you? Uh, I'm sorry. If James, I'm are you? Sorry. Gonna, are you? I'm talking. To, who else am I talking to, man? I'm talking to the people in the chat room, well, but they I, don't I, respond I, for for a while. Well, I, 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 I asked you. Okay. An important message came through through an important person. Really? Okay. Well, so I, mean, I was told by a secret source that the new website. We are the first show to have the new website. Isn't that cool? <laughs> this, is, this is behind the scenes from a secret source. All right. Well, that's cool, man. So that, what are you saying about a Bigfoot uh, uh, trying to hump here, or something? Here, here. Why'd you have to go there, man? <laughs> we were clean up until this point. We were Mr. Clean, and all of a sudden you got to jump, jump in the sewer. 
<laughs> Dude, it is 1026. Let's take our quick first quick break. Okay. Right, we'll come back and do and some strange we'll things by. in the news. We got a strange we got some crazy strange things in the news. Now come on now. Yeah. Some really strange things in the news. And then what, at eleven o'clock? Yep. We're All bringing right. our, our guest on. on. And, and so we folks, will. hang out. We're talking Bigfoot tonight. We're talking Harry and the Hendersons. We're talking a, a subject of James that his eyes perk up. He gets all giddy. He's like, I love Bigfoot. I'm surprised you don't have a, a shirt, a T-shirt on. That says, I need, yeah, I, need I love to get Bigfoot. One. You're right. You need to get a Bigfoot and say, I, I I dig Bigfoot, or I'm 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 bully for Bigfoot. I'm big on Bigfoot. I'm big on Bigfoot. I'm big on Bigfoot. There, there you go, go man. There's there's some, there. All right, so hang out, folks. We'll be right back. Uh, don't go away. Strange Things Radio. How you folks feeling tonight? We got a little bit of craziness going on. We're going to have some Bigfoot discussion here in about a half hour. So go get your favorite beverage. Snuggle up to your special someone. And let the music groove you. We'll be right back.
Always strange, always strange here on Strange Things Radio. And listen, I saw you people out there making cracks about our music. What's wrong with our music? I thought that was jazzy. I thought that was killer. I was digging it. Some guy came up and said he dug it, so what was the problem? I kind of like, didn't you like it, James? It was uh, designed for the so. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Dude, the way you just said that. Yeah, it was designed for the show. It was. It was designed for the show. All right, strange things in the news, folks. What is with people, man? I mean, what is with people? I mean, it's just, you sit there and you shake your head and you go, what in the hell is going on in our world? Check it out. Check This lady who had an exorcism done in her home, okay? Evidently, she thought she was being plagued by an evil spirit, a devil, whatever. She's not really talking now that she's been arrested by the police. Oh, yeah, folks, she was arrested. Check out what she did. I want to say she was in her mid-30s, okay? And she had been dating this guy. And they were going on, and for whatever reason... The guy decided to break up with her. Well, he wanted his stuff, some of his stuff back that this woman had. And his mother said, decide, okay, well, I'll go over and I'll pick it. Or the lady, she called her. Somehow there was communication between the two. And this psycho lady, this exorcist house lady, decided to said, okay, well, I'll leave all his stuff on the curb, come get it, or I'm going to throw it out. So this lady takes her nine-year-old grandson and decides to go pick up the stuff. She shows up. The lady comes out of the house with a knife, stabs her, decapitates her. The little boy runs for help, gets calls 911 the cops come walk into the house and this lady had put this severed head in the sink my god how do you get it? You now she hard. now now she doesn't want to talk about it she doesn't want to talk about she talks about well I don't know why it did it or why it and the cops are like what the hell are you talking about it what's it you know, so this is the thing, folks. Why are people messing with Ouija boards and getting into seances and trying to contact the dead and blah, blah, blah? Because you open yourself up to evil things, things that we have no idea about, that we talk about, that we theorize about. Look, we're on a sh- on a network that specializes in the paranormal. I have no problem with that, but when it gets into divination, I mean, I, I know you love your Ouija boards, bro, and I'm not going to sit there and single out your Ouija boards because I oh no no I, I they understand. Are very, listen, they're very artistic. Well, I think okay, I do believe there is a, a chance, like anything in divination, that you could invoke. You call them demons, fine. I call them negative spirits. That you How about, can, mane- uh, was it mane- uh, benevolent? Benevolent? Be- be- bene- uh, manevol- oh. Bad people. Bad, bad, spirit. Spirit. bad, bad spirits. spirits. Bad spirits. Spirits that want to hurt you. Bad spirit. Bad right. spirit. All right. So, uh, CC, what, what am I trying to say? So, She'll um, come up. So, um, no, I, I agree there. I, think <laughs> I have a Ouija board blanket on. <laughs> 
Oh, isn't that dude? Cute? Wait, no, that would. I think that would be a seller. Can you imagine? Oh, well, they probably do have them. A Ouija board. Just market? But the problem is, you can't put the word Ouija on it. But yeah, I know you could actually. Because you don't need to no, but the people are going to see when they see the alphabet, right? The, the number. Put the word the Ouija yes, on it. the no. What are some of the other things on there? Yes, yes, no. no um, the number. alphabet. Um, some people do other things. Goodbye. Um, some people change them up to put. Um, like I have a pirate one that says. Yeah, it says uh, nay and yay, right? And, um, and Dude, are uh, you kidding me? No, I have a cool pirate one I made. But go back to the, the board. Malevolent. Uh, malevolent? M- malevolent. Thank you, right. CC. So I do think that that um, you can get um, evil spirits through, those, through different divination. Not just spirit boards. I think you can get. Um, but spirit boards do have a tendency to um, call you're looking for a spirit it does call um a spirit out um if you're not careful so there is certain things that i i say that people should do before they go jumping into a board i really do and so all right james i'd understand if there was a book on how to there is plenty of books out there right those uh, those are people that think they know what to do we have no idea about the spirit world james we do to a certain degree <sighs> I, get- I mean you can clear the air of negative spirits you can put a uh, a spell Around it, or you can surround it with with salt. I mean, there's things and things you can do to help contain, if you want to. Okay. Would you let Alex and Lily Lou no, play with the weed? No, not board? right now because I think they're too young. I think and, they, and I think it's, you have to do certain things. You can clear the air, you know, cleanse the spirit, you know, cleanse the air, clean your, you know. I think there's certain things you need to do, and they're just not, you know. It's like I don't let my 15-year-old son play M-rated on video games that I haven't reviewed. I mean, it's a video game, and I'm not letting him play that. I'm, more, I'm very cautious about what he sees. Even rated, even PG-13 movies, and he's 15, if I don't like what content they put in that movie, I won't let him watch it. Uh, Gen Z, that's the dog. The microphone is close to the dog's bone. <laughs> and they're like, what's with the noise? Oh, yeah. yeah someone, no, that was that was the Duke getting himself a little slurp of, uh, a little slurp, a little drinky drink. Yeah, in my little kitchen area, there's a spot where Duke This is the him. thing, James. This is the thing about playing with Ouija boards. Okay. Maybe it was like, oh, it's, but what if you really bring forth an evil spirit that doesn't want to leave? Let's say you open up a door and that door slams after something evil comes through. And then to the point where this evil spirit can convince some psycho to cut off the head of her ex-boyfriend's mother. I mean, James. But, but didn't say that in the article. It did, not, does, it did not say anything possessed? about a Ouija. I, so, I, I don't know. See, not, you know, there's, there's, I think they just possessions. had some sort of an exorcism. They didn't get into details, but I'm just sitting there. Like, I so think, you think the exorcism went wrong? I think you pissed some, something off. Right. So that's not the Ouija be a problem. That's a, that's a that, like, was a, was a Catholic priest went sideways on his exorcism. And I, see, I don't know. All I know is, is I wouldn't want to take. So what a about what about? Okay, that's a good question. So I know you 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 fear boards, but what about um, people who do exorcism and don't do it right? So that could be just as much of a problem too. Well, this is the thing. Who was that couple that used to do a lot of? Um, they they were very very. Um, they were famous. It was a it was a it was a couple, a man and a woman. What were their names? Oh, you mean the um, the Warrens? The Warrens. Okay. Yeah. Didn't they do some pretty, like, he did high high end? Well, not high end, but cases that we're aware of where right. they got involved, where they tried to exercise. Because isn't exorcism a right from Catholic <laughs> in, in Catholicism? Right? You're laughing at me. What do you? Because you said they they exercise, which is you're right. You do exercise something, but I'm just thinking, okay, girls, let's go. Just, one, two, one, yes. two. Get that, get, get, that, yes. get that demon out. Get those Yes. Get those demons yes. out. Get those yes. demons out. We're going to exercise it out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, that's just what popped dude, in my dude, head. Dude, dude. <laughs> this is why we could never do regular. Rip. We could never be serious broadcasters. They don't want us like that. We're not cases, man. We, we are have, definitely we have, not the coast we, to coast. We, we, we have to. Yeah, we're not. All right, and they sat there and wait. I heard about the severed head. Yeah, move. It was just, it was sad, man. Could you imagine that little nine-year-old boy 
No, that's How the part, guys. How scarred he would be. <laughs> Richard Simmons School of Exorcism. <laughs> All right, let's put the leg Woo! warmers on. Yeah. <laughs> Get those boards going. Yeah, <laughs> but, but listen, I mean, I wouldn't. I remember being young. Let's have a seance. Oh, let's have a seance. Let's have a seance. Let's, um, you know, let's. Uh, what was the one where you stare in the mirror and you're just like um, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, or whatever? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, first of all, I was too scared to even do that. I'm like, you know what? My imagination, yeah, yeah, I would, I would. That's why, you know, when I was young, I mean, I never because of my because of my belief systems, I never did any serious experimentation with you know psychedelics or anything like that. Let's be, just be honest with you, okay? We were all probably tempted at one time. I'm glad I didn't go that route. Because I'll tell with, you right now. With what? Psychedelics? You know what I'm talking about, man. Reefer? No, not reefer. No. A little, a little like, acid? Like acid or something like that. I, look, no, dude, I, look at Gen Z. Red rum, red rum. Hey, I'm just... I will tell you, honestly, I've never had access to that. And I've never... I've always had a good health of fear drugs. Me too. I've never, I've never Me been... Me too. People know this. I've never been drunk. I've never been high. Or anything unless it was a legal prescription. Was I took? Well, I had a surgery once. They gave me um, not Percocets, but um, another painkiller. Morphine? No. I, I, uh, another uh, another one. I can't. Remember. But I took it for like three days, and it made me feel so loopy. <laughs> I was, I was like, I'm done. I know Taco Bell will do that to me. <laughs> hey, Rebecca, that was funny. That was no. funny. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> but you guys sound high often on the show. I, no. Look, look Listen, this is the thing. It's called have, Theater of the Mind. Have we here? Yeah. <laughs> you know, who was it? Theater? was that Motley Crue? Theater of something. Anyway, Theater of Pain. Dude. This, this dude. The, that was the one of the best albums ever, but that's just my... But this, this, this is the thing. All right. Howl at the moon. No, that's Ozzy. Hey, dude. I just said it. I just said it. You you did, but but yeah, so... Is it, but but you know we're at least we're at least trying to uh, stay on the straight and narrow. Are you going to go get this dog a bone? Oh my gosh, folks! He, you know what? He is so. This dog has you wrapped around his paw. You know that small bone. They all look the same. No, no, move. No, 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 no. I'm saying, all right. I I'm not going to give my age away. No, that's not bad, man. Yeah, go, go, go. Yeah. But you know, I come from an era where, you know, I mean that 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 kind of stuff went on, you know. So, and I never, I never said yes because if so, I'm. Fi- good man. What's that? Yes. Oh, please. <laughs> Sorry. For that. All good people. Uh, I mean, please. Yes. So. Dude, you know what you're doing? You're tempting me, man. I, I didn't mean you're, to. No, you are you tempting keep... me right now because you're putting this stuff in my mind. That's just the way I am. That's how my mind re- Did you just do the claw look? <laughs> <laughs> you just hit the claw look, man. That's but no, I... the bottom line is this. Don't mess with Ouija boards, folks. Don't I, get... I can't say that. Don't... It's... All right, this is the thing. Okay. All right, really? I think if... Right, here, here. Okay, I... when, when have you had a Ouija board session? Once, well, Never. Uh, have you? Don't be honest with me. Come on. No, because be, the board before, I have is broke. Oh, my gosh. Led Zeppelin, too. Oh, jeez. There's nothing. Oh. Breaking news. Oh, oh. I have heard that Led Zeppelin is reuniting no way. for some concert in the desert. Because they're also alive, right? Except for Bonham. Oh, okay. But, but, no, his, his, but his, his son, son. His son is. His son is <clears throat> wicked good. Oh, please. My favorite album, please, In Through the Outdoor. Hello. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, was my fa- that was my fave. Wait, never ask a lady her age. Eric will never. T- <laughs> hey, Joshua hey. Tree was very good, too. I love Joshua Tree. Well, yeah, different I, era. Different era. D- I mean. Different era. And you got to admit, look, I listened to Led Zeppelin. I was a fa- I, I I enjoyed Led Zeppelin. You too is no Led Zeppelin. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, that okay, good. I mean Ze- Ze- Zeppelin is <sighs> baby music. <laughs> I have Move, no what idea, do you folks. He graced us with his presence. The cool black friend, folks. I got to tell you something. This guy, literally, he's the techie Yoda. Oh, that's, yeah. that's from your work. Oh, dude, dude. Oh, my gosh. I'm almost tempted to set up an altar, 
but I'm afraid the 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 I can help you make one. The the, the IT director might say, "Okay, you're going overboard, buddy. <laughs> you're going overboard." So, yeah, he, he I, I'm I'm starting to slowly reveal some of my uh, uh, eccentricities. All right, uh-huh. my, uh, yeah, I'm starting to slowly reveal the true Eric. Nothing get. Right? Oh, dude, you know what? He didn't shoot me down when I sat there, and I I, I kind of I kind of got him behind the pulpit for about five ten minutes. Oh, uh-huh. bathroom kit. What? I said bathroom kit, and you go no. I got him behind the- no, I uh, today today. But the thing is, he was talking to some other guy on the phone. They were resolving some sort of a server issue, and I'm fearful that the guy heard my whole thing. Man. <laughs> I mean, I went from beginning to end, and he just sat. He just sat there and just let me rant. You, on the other hand, would have been shaking your head, going, "Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Why do you always got to be combative with me? Cause you never because." Uh, there's nothing, because there's nothing you say that I haven't heard a million times over. Right, maybe nothing I will say, but I am, I firmly believe and I'm fine that, that God Almighty is going to do a Paul on you. Remember oh, Paul? Oh, I know Paul. Remember Paul? I know Paul. On the way to, he was on his way to some city and 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 mm-hmm. sat there and he and he, Christ he, said he took well, out anyone. Oh, 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 are you saying that he had some sort of Nervous freaking uh, a psychedelic cactus? What is that called? What's a psychedelic cactus called? I forgot. Peyote? Peyote. You yeah. t- they don't have peyote over in Israel, man. What's wrong with you? So that's the problem with the Middle East. They don't have good drugs. <laughs> just saying. If, they, if, if the Middle East could smoke could a little you weed. you nice just going, man, I'm just having too much fun. I don't want to I mean, look, look at... Um, <laughs> Okay, listen. We're now we're good. We're good. We can't joke about something seriously like about that. You gotta be. You gotta be honest. These guys are. These well, look guys at Afghanistan. Are, I mean, they don't do anything. I mean, they're they're high on their own opium. Over oh yeah, there. yeah. The, the, the poppy. Yeah. yeah, the poppy. So, yeah. What do you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's just you know and, and, and see that and, and see that see folks how we get sidetracked. We're talking about we go from decapitation decapitation um, head in a sink to. Poppy How do we take two <laughs> poppy seeds and two to, to, to bands? Okay, rock bands <laughs> to be for twenty. Anybody listen to the show? Going, yeah, yeah, they're smoking some serious green. <laughs> they are because they're, they're. But see, that's why we've embraced the fact that we are the ADD of radio. James, are we not the ADD of radio? I, and I, I seriously think that I think it's like a EEOC or the Equal Opportunity Broadcaster. Uh, uh, like a social thing that they said, let's let these two guys come on and do a show. <laughs> let's see, well, what we'll do is, is we'll just keep our bus. button. If they go off onto, you know, we'll, uh, you know, and if they get an audience, they get an audience, but we feel sorry for them. You know, they're just, they have no friends. You know, people, people think they're just two way out there. They're not very knowledgeable. Ask them, you know, ask them anything about, you know, Egyptian gods or anything like that or really go into, you know, witchcraft. And they don't know dead Jack Diddley. Well, I know witchcraft. You don't know witchcraft. I know witchcraft. Really? Yeah. Okay. What was Samantha's mother's name? Oh, you mean witchcraft? The TV show, Bewitched. I'm That's waiting. Bewitched. I'm That's waiting. Come witchcraft. on, come on. What was her? What was her name? Martha. All right, man. I don't know. I bet no one. I bet Cece. I bet Cece throws it out there, man, because she knows everything. Cece, she knows everything. So, um, all right. So this this is the thing, James. Do you have to set up, folks? Tonight we're going to have a guest. Can't wait, Endora. She's so good, man. You got to give it up, man. You got to give it up for her. what the. the James, 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 are you on the show, man? Are you? I'm, being, I'm, right I, here. I'm saying what what CC said about Endora. What, what about I love it? Endora. Me too. You know what I love? Oh, the, the little old lady I, one. Yeah, she was crazy. And no, no, the mother-in-law, the mean mother-in-law. Oh, I thought the one that was I, always I trying the, to to I burn thought, uh, Darren's biscuits. I thought the aunt. No, remember the aunt? Oh, she was cool. <laughs> yeah, she was you know funny. what? Listen, listen, I got to tell you, I dream of Jeannie. All right, Barbara Eden, Barbara Eden was gorgeous. Loved her as Jeannie. But you know what really got my engine running was her, her, let's just say, overtly sensuous 
cousin, and I forgot what her name. You know, every time she'd come on, it would be like, you know, she was, never mind, James. Well, you know, why, why do I try? Why, oh, why, why do I, I try? I was, I was, because you're, you're multitasking, and you got to stay in the moment. All right, yeah. Sorry. Folks, listen, what, what we're going to do is. No, not yet, though, dude. We, you got to get a hold of the guy, man. Yeah, we're going to call him five minutes till. We're still, we got. Do we got five more minutes? All right. Then we'll come off the air. I'll All right. Call well, them. here. We'll why, why, don't you, why don't you get, whet the appetites of the strangelings and tell them who this guy is and what he does? I have no clue. No, I'm stuck. Thanks, James. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate it. All right. So he, uh, not to give away, but he's into Bigfoot, and he has a cool little website, and they're starting like a research. I followed him on Facebook, and he's got some, I'm looking at some of the images he has here in Florida, and... Either he's done gone to great lengths to fake these things, or these are some really good out in the field research style stuff. Not some not cutting across a road or anything like that. These are hidden in the woods. He's caught photo. He's got images, and he highlight and he can tell. I mean, James, this is what I don't understand about that. How could Bigfoot survive down in the flo- here in Florida? Oh, just dude, just no, J- James. You got to admit, is there is there another state say excluding maybe Texas? I would even venture to rule out California that has more deadly animals and insects. But they don't. No, I mean, think. But about they don't it. what? You telling me a coral snake couldn't take down a Bigfoot? Uh, probably not. Are you? You're tripping, man, aren't you? No, no. Because think about it. All right, remember okay. yellow. What is it? Yellow, black, stand back. Red, yellow, black, stand back. Dude, I've I've been into the into the into the. Oh, my eyeballs! It's like crazy. Oh, sorry, folks. I've been into plenty of parks. I've never seen a live coral snake in the park. Those things, plus the snakes are more scared of you than they are them. Plus, these things are huge. They're the apex predator of of anything out there. And there's enough. Dr. Bombay. <laughs> All right. Bombay. We, obviously, CeCe was a huge fan of Bewitched. Dr. Bombay, oh, remember okay. Dr. Yeah. Bombay? And see, the thing is, for all you young listeners out there, you're probably like, what the hell are these guys talking about? See, they're going off on another tangent. We just don't understand. Can you go back to Ouija board and seances and conjure exorcism? I understand exorcism. Look. Oh, so here's the, oh, by the way, here's the choral theme song. Ready? Red touch black, save for Jack. Red touch yellow, kills a fellow. That's the one I remember. So that's the uh, what, what about for the Bigfoot? Dude, you're telling, listen. They say I have no the coral for snake Bigfoot. is probably one of the most deadliest snakes on the planet. I'm pretty sure Bigfoot's smart enough to keep out of the way of those things. You it's, think a big, it's a Bigfoot, James. Are you telling me he's light on his feet? Oh, those things are quiet if he wants to be. Oh, yeah. I don't know, man. I'm just saying I don't understand well, how we they can, can survive. Mark the, we can ask what Mark about Bigfoot? alligators? I mean, you think you're telling ever, me a big, When's the last time an alligator actually attacked a man? Just outright in the woods. I don't have an answer to that. Yeah, because it doesn't really happen. I well. know they love little chihuahuas and little Yeah, poos. because they're tiny. Yeah. The bigger you are, Could the more... Could you imagine one of a poor little blue hair walking? Come on, little big... You know, sort of <laughs> and, and then, oh my gosh, I, could, I couldn't even imagine it. I couldn't even imagine it. All right. So, but we're talking Bigfoot tonight, folks. It's 1054. All right. You want to go ahead and jump on it? So, yeah. folks, listen. Uh, you know, it's Friday night. 11 p.m., you're hanging out with us, James and Eric, on Strange Things Radio. Uh, The the, uh, ADD of radio, the delirious duo... I was I wasn't gonna you know I, I was gonna say something else. Gator taters, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> gator taters. Dude, have you ever had gator tail? Oh, I have. Oh my gosh, gator nuggets are killer. Yeah. The only thing is a little greasy, a little yeah, greasy. Well, yeah, yeah. And I remember when I had a couple like grease came down the, the side of my cheek, and I'm, I know people are staring at me, going, "Look at the fat guy eating greasy stuff." But come on, come on, please, come we're on. Going, we're going to break. We're going to break, folks. Don't go away. We're next. We're going to come up. We're going to have a our guest on. We're going to be talking Bigfoot tonight. We're going to hopefully get some links for you to check out some pictures so don't go anywhere we got another hour's worth of show go grab yourself some drinkage and some snackage and come on back we'll be right back don't go away Strange things. 
Radio. I'm Kathleen Maloney. North Korean state media claims there was a plot to assassinate the country's leader. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un was the target of an assassination attempt orchestrated by the CIA and its South Korean counterpart. Or at least that's what North Korean state media claim. According to the account, the hit was supposed to have happened at a military parade in Pyongyang last month, which Fox News attended. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un presiding over a most unusual parade in Pyongyang today, a combination of military. The CIA allegedly turned the North Korean would-be assassin while he was outside of the country, paid him off, geared him up with a satellite communications device, and armed him with a dirty bomb containing radioactive material. Pyongyang says it thwarted the plot. Fox's Greg Palka, no comment from the CIA. A ceremony at the State Department to remember foreign service workers who died in the line of duty. It's been my great pri- privilege to take part in the American Foreign Service Association's memorial ceremony honoring the service and sacrifice of the men and women who did not make it back. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, the names of 248 people are engraved on a special plaque at the State Department. President Trump's next health care challenge is selling the GOP bill passed by the House to the Senate. The House bill is a plan that will save Americans from this disaster and replace it with more choices and more freedom for American families. Most importantly, it will be great health care, and your premiums will come down, and your deductibles will come down. The president delivering his weekly address. Senate Republicans aren't immediately jumping on the House health care bandwagon, some saying there are more questions than answers about the measure it approved. And an election campaign commission in France is investigating a hack against the leading candidate. Fox News Radio, fair and balanced. President Trump is spending time in Bedminster, New Jersey, and keeping him safe could strain the town's budget. The Secret Service is in charge of the overall operation, using local resources along with state police and other regional law enforcement agencies. Bedminster, which has a population of under 9,000, has only a police force of just 16 officers, and that's including the chief. The mayor told us that an average weekend of a presidential visit will cost the township about $42,000. This sleepy rural community will be getting some relief. President Trump signed a budget bill that will target $61 million to reimburse local law enforcement for protecting the president when he is in Palm Beach, New York, and Bedminster. In Bedminster, New Jersey, Laura Engel, Fox News. Both Democratic and Republican members of New York's congressional delegation are credited with getting that federal reimbursement. My colleagues here had to go and fight a tough battle to convince people to do unto others as they would want done unto them, that to think of it were their city, their town, how would they want the federal government to treat them? And they they really wore down the opposition. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio, a young man is awarded a college degree after his death. He was 17 when he was shot and killed by a neighborhood watch volunteer five years ago. Now Trevon Martin is getting a posthumous Bachelor of Science degree from Florida Memorial University in Miami Gardens, Florida. Its Facebook page says his parents will accept the degree at commencement next Saturday. The boy's mother, Sabrina Fulton, went to Florida Memorial and started the Trayvon Martin Foundation. He'd wanted to become a pilot, so the degree is in aviation. 
Chris Foster, Fox News. Former First Lady Michelle Obama says she'll continue acting on her passion for education despite leaving the White House. She spoke at a New York City event marking College Signing Day, a nationwide tradition she began to encourage young people to seek higher education. I'm Kathleen Maloney, Fox News Radio. Yeah, Strange Things Radio, rocking and rolling on a Friday night. Got another hour's worth of show left. Um, we are always pleased to have guests of this type, this ca- this caliber, who is extremely knowledgeable about the topic that we're going to discuss tonight. All right, host. what? Your host, dude, I can't hear you. You. Yeah. We're not talking UFOs. Come on. We, you, you know right now that you're giddy with the prospect of talking about your favorite topic and having an expert like this on to be able to answer some of our questions and you know enlighten us and give us some, some of his knowledge about Bigfoot. Come on. Be honest now. Yes. Okay. All right. So let's, yeah, I'm going to connect him to the board. Okay. Run it up. Hey, Mark, you there? Hey, Mark, you there? Are you oh, muted? Oh, oops. <laughs> you, had him, you had him muted. So yeah. you're like, hey, Mark, are you there? Are you there, Mark? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Mark, you there? I'm here. Uh, all right. Sorry about you that. Guys, you, can you guys hear me? Oh, yeah. Uh, we can, we can okay. hear you now. I think I just lost uh, the, my eardrum. I mean, James really had to cook because he's like, he's like, yeah, Mark, are you there? Mark, are you there? Mark, are you there? And then boom. <laughs> Buddy, I got to tell you something. James has been giddy with the prospect of talking to you, just so you know. I mean, he, he has become a huge fan. This is the one subject that he's always like every other week. Should we talk about Bigfoot? Should we talk about Bigfoot? I'm like, James, 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 relax, man. We're going to get to Bigfoot, but we can't constantly talk about Bigfoot. So, um, welcome. Welcome to Strange Things Radio. Welcome to Strangelings. Say hello to Mark. Mark, say hello to the Strangelings. <laughs> How you guys doing, man? Thanks for having me. Oh, man, we are so thankful that you're here. By the way, he, right. he may not know who you are, so introduce yourself. My name's Eric. Yeah. He may not know that. Oh, well, yeah. I'm, so, <laughs> is, hey, listen, he's the show tonight. <laughs> he's the show. I'm just a, a guy on the sidelines, right? Listen, we, we were talking earlier, and I got a question. All right. I, I'm kind of convinced that, yes, Bigfoot exists. I, 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 I mean, there's been too much video, too much... Too many, too, too much evidence, too many um, sightings for people to sit there and say, "Yeah, um, the, I, I mean, I, I just believe this 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 creature exists." Now, here's my question: We we know that there have been sightings down here in Florida, and I was talking to James. I'm like, "Listen, you go out into the woods, you have coral snakes, you have all kinds of deadly creatures. How the heck can a Bigfoot exist after he's been bitten by a coral snake, which is one of the most deadliest? Would you, I mean, I, I don't know if you may, maybe would agree, but my understanding of coral snake, their venomous, their venom is just absolutely incredible. and It's powerful, potent, and can kill a man. Now, can it kill a Bigfoot? That's my question. Well, uh, there's no simple answer for that. I, I think that, um, you know, in researching in the field, uh, the first maybe year or so, um, we were, we were in one area that's, uh, it's quite vast here and it's just east of Lake Okeechobee. And, um, what we noticed was there were certain areas that should hold, uh, very large numbers of venomous snakes. Uh, and, and in most of the areas that we would frequent, there would be large numbers. And then you, you get into certain areas, and uh, and you start to see the signatures of the Bigfoot species uh, in the environment. They're a keystone species, so they affect every aspect of the environment. And and, and that's arboreal, the, the ecology, uh, you know, the the ground itself, and all of the wildlife. And, uh, and we were unaware of this, but this is when we first started to pick up on the fact that they are indeed a keystone species. When we got into these certain areas, that uh, it was obvious. I mean, you find 18-inch tracks, and it goes on for a half a mile, or you find 
you know, four different individuals tracks. And, and within that area, we started to spend quite a bit of time, obviously, and that's what we were looking for. And, uh, and you're finding all this sign, but you're not seeing any venomous snakes. And when I say none, I mean none. And not just venomous snakes. Um, snakes are very rare in the areas that we research. And, and, and I have a theory on that. I can't obviously prove it at this point. But with repetitive documentation of this uh, displacement of various species, it's not just uh, you know venomous snakes, it's the American alligator. They displace the alligators in our in our research areas. You you go just outside the areas, a half a mile or so, and you start to see the American alligators again. But for some reason, and it's it's you know in these areas. So the venomous snakes thing, I think they kill them, and uh, and it would be something to catch something like that on film. But in documenting the other wildlife species in these areas that we research in, that we have tons of footage of these Bigfoot in. We notice that the squirrel populations are next to nothing. The, the venomous snakes, next to nothing. The, the crocodilians have been displaced. There's, there are absolutely no American alligators. Um, the deer population is down to the point where Florida Fish and Wildlife have obviously concerns. When we see these people, they repetitively have asked us to report poachers. And, uh, and you know, we see scientists in these areas. There are scientists that are tasked with studying the wildlife in our areas, and they're finding the same things we are. And, uh, and so when people ask me questions like that, you know, it's very difficult because what I typically stick to is what I can show you. And, uh, and it's very difficult to show venomous snakes if there are none. <laughs> you know what well, I mean? That's so true. Yeah. Our data tells us that there is something present, and it has to be a keystone species in order to affect all of the species, and they do. And so that's what I can tell you. As far as answering that question, that would be the only way I could. That's the data that we have. Here's another one, and James and I have talked about this. I think I watched some show where, and I, 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 I want to say it was in the northwestern area where there was a great population of grizzly bears and mm -hmm. but um or at least there was thought that it, where you would have a nuisance bear and they would tranquilize it and they would take it to this area but this area was also well known for bigfoot sightings and they mm -hmm. and and I, I forgot what show it was maybe it was you know i, I don't know it was maybe that one guy that i what was it the, the one that uh had the the video of the face of bigfoot what was his name um damn, uh, i anyway i'm i'm not familiar with that they one, so. they were they were um uh evidently the the grizzly bears decided to this take is, a hike this is in canada actually oh it was in canada where that was yeah Slender. Something man, something um, survivor man, survivor man. Okay, and he was okay. talking about like Saskatchewan or yes, Ontario, someplace. Yeah, okay. right. And they were talking about where this area that should be just overrun with bears, gone, nothing. Like the bears said, yeah. "We're out of here. Let's Let, just let's, let's go get it. Let's go get the pig well, basket and boogie." That's that's corroborating uh, data. You know what I mean? I mean, if you look at things from a scientific point of view, you can't have. Uh, an alpha human primate that's upright, intelligent, obviously, and uh, an extremely adept, environmentally adaptive, and and completely, you know, master of its domain without having the keystone species aspect, aspect affect it wherever it is in whatever environment it lives in. So that's actually corroboration to the same data that we have here in, in the state of Florida. If that statement and, and if what you're saying is actually true with what he said. I mean, I would agree that that's something that you're going to find wherever you find significant numbers of reports of Sasquatch. The native wildlife is going to be affected, whether it would be from feeding, uh, the, the wildlife being eaten, or, or whether it would be with the bears. I think it's more of a, you know, runoff because well, it's competitive. Right. They're see, competitive. They're and, meat eaters. And see, I mean? that's now, the thing. Now, obviously, bears aren't going to eat deer unless it's, you know, dead or it's a sick deer. But at the same time, there are also threats because these things are they they are essentially family units. They're they're human primates, man. They belong somewhere in a family hominy on on the upper side of I believe on the upper side of uh, of you know prehumans hominoids, uh, or they wouldn't still be here. Uh, you have 
there are plenty of examples of failed species of of prehumans and hominoids. These guys are still here, and I think it's due to the fact that what we see is something that's highly adaptive. I mean, they respond to human development accordingly, and they can still stay in that area, regardless of communities that are built up around these uh, preserves. And uh, we see an interaction with uh, with every every species in in the area. So, well, we, I, I mean, especially with the grizzly bear. So I sit there and think, okay, land animal, apex, very top, you either have your uh, polar bear, okay? No one's going no to mess with a polar bear. Or a grizzly bear. And I'm sitting there imagining a nine-foot, hairy beast of a, a, a bipedal creature staring down a grizzly bear and the grizzly bear high tailing and these grizzly bears they can get what six seven eight hundred pounds these things are massive especially when they stand up so i'm i'm sitting there thinking wow so maybe bigfoot what do you call them uh, mark a keystone like like is that the i mean when you refer to a keystone are you talking like the very top apex the the very well top? keystone keystone species essentially the american alligator is a keystone species it affects every aspect of the environment that it okay uh, i see what you're settles saying. in okay. you know what i mean they yeah. affect everything okay and uh, and so it would be in that 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 classification of of you know the uh the wildlife that's present i mean they're obviously not there i look at it like this you know, you can take a man and put him out in the bush, and if he stays there long enough, he's going to get wild. If you have no weapons and you have to kill with your hands, it doesn't matter who you are or what you are. There are certain things that you're going to have to adapt to to do that. And these guys are that in, in its essence. And so, you know, when you look at it, uh, you describe the situation like what you just were talking about, and they're staring each other down. Well, most people don't realize because of the footage that's been available, and uh, and we're we're not exempt from this. We provide tons of footage of these guys, but the reality of their existence does not clearly show their power and their speed. As an eyewitness myself, I could tell you they move like something out of a science fiction movie when they have to. They look like something that came straight out of uh, a science fiction movie. They can move in upwards of 35 miles an hour. They can jump incredible distances. Their musculature is there, and it can do what it suggests. And, and what it suggests in, in modern human terms, in American thinking, and, and the programmed American consciousness, you would attribute what I saw to, to having seen that, that in the movie that Steven Spielberg made, you know, wow. uh, it's, it's incredible. And to see something like that gave me a head start in my research because once I witnessed that, I understood quite a bit about why people say they're supernatural and they can't find them and all this stuff. You know, what I saw was something that was so powerful and it, and it, and it looked like he had done this a million times he had no trouble doing it. It was like a common thing for this guy to do it. Uh, he basically cleared a 20-foot trail, but he was in excess of six feet off the ground and had jumped a bush before. He was coming down, clearing the 20-foot trail. Wow. He had jumped from out in the water. And when I saw him, I thought I was hallucinating until he landed. And when he landed and turned, and, he, and his whole upper body turned, because I, I yelled, whoa, like this. I mean, it was yeah. right there. And I thought, there's no way I'm seeing this, you know? And and he landed so gingerly in, in, to, in, to, in the seconds when I was watching this thing flying across this trail. I thought, for sure, he's going to wipe out and we're going to feel this thing hit because it was so big, you know what I mean? But he landed, like, almost tippy-toe. Wow. And he was I would say he was traveling in excess of 35 miles an hour. And uh, then he, and I didn't think I was, I didn't, you know, it was in a state of shock, you know? And then, then he turned. And he turned his upper body first, and then his feet shifted position after that. It was strange. It was kind of almost lethargic the way he did it. After he was moving like that, it was strange. And then he was behind, partially behind a set of palm, uh, palm fronds from a cabbage palm that was sticking out in the trail. And he just reached up and pulled the palm frond down and stared at me, and I stared at him for a second or two, and he scowled. And then I looked over at my hiking companion. Let's get out of here. Turn the cameras <laughs> on, man. And when we looked back up a second later, He's the gone. bushes were all moving and he was wow. gone and we wow. never saw him again, you know. But uh, the, the whole thing is that, you know, I could, I could imagine that, you know, for the native wildlife, 
that's why they run. Uh, the behaviors of even the squirrels, uh, or, or let's take let's take let's take uh, the subject of ornithology. Let's let's go. Let's talk about owls for a second. Okay, okay. I follow these owls because the owls are smart enough to watch, and and we found this pattern. They're feeding on the rodents that these guys spook, and we have tons of field mice in these areas that we research in. And uh, and the owls will sit in the tree, man. We we come up on an owl and we start shooting because they're smart, man. These owls, and invariably we catch these guys on film peeking through the bushes at us. You know, you'll hear them uh, getting up and, and moving as we approach, and there'll be an owl sitting there. That's happened dozens of times, and and so what we see is this symbiotic relationship with other species as well. Obviously, if the owl was on the ground, it, it probably would end up being torn apart, but. You know, they stay, uh, you know, 25 to 30 feet off the ground in these areas that we research, research and we've, we've got so much footage of owls and then subsequent audio within seconds of filming the owl of what sounds like a giant man. Wow. You know, that kind of thing. And then they're running off, and it's like, you know, it's obvious once you start hearing them, and, uh, you know. So, well, you know, so yeah, I, I think the keystone aspects work both ways. Well, when, when I say they affect the entire environment, there are other species that can stay out of the Sasquatch's feeding range that are actually symbiotically existing, coexisting with the Sasquatch and using the Sasquatch's presence to its advantage would be a good way to describe it. Wow. And, and I, and I got to tell you, when you're talking about footage, when I t- we talk about video, there are certain videos that I have seen that I'm like, okay, there's no way they could. This this is beyond the hoax, okay? And I want to talk about a couple of them real quick and see if you've seen them. One sure. was, was it a Labor Day video? What was it? We, we, I've, I've, you've looked at it, Labor Day, James? or The one that's cutting across the arm. The, the, that's boogieing across the bottom of a ravine. And this right, thing, right. this thing, do you know what I'm talking that's about, the, Mark? The Memorial Day footage there where you the, go. the family's yeah. picnicking and it's, a hundred, couple hundred yards away, running yeah, down that talk, bank, and it runs into the tree line. What's your impression of that? Uh, you know, man, there are uh, there are a lot of different, there are a lot of variations in what we see in the field in between individuals. Most of it has to do with soft tissue, facial features. They don't all look the same. They look very different. That's one thing we have in common with them. Um, what they have in common with us, whichever your perspective, they look like they, they have variations in their, in their facial, you know, features. So, but the body is for the most part, what we've seen the more, you know, the physical structure, the bone structure, and then the accompanying musculature is typically the same. And, and they have different measurements than a normal human. And also, their gait is different than a normal human, which I'm sure you guys are familiar with all that. Right. So, but when you look at videos like that, what you see is a is an upright running, blurry kind of you know figure. And and could a man do it? And that's the questions that typically are asked when they, when that kind of stuff is reviewed on a show. And I think I watched one where the guy tried to do it. and He was like a decathlete. And he yeah, they tried to re- they recreated and, it. They tried to recreate it. Yeah, and uh, and they and they found. You know, from doing these measurements, that the individual is somewhere around six feet tall or just under. You know what I mean? So it's not outside the realm of like you know humans and this and that. And it could have just been somebody in a suit. And, and you're always going to run into that. And and I think that you know when I look at all that stuff, I try to stay out of all of that controversy because what I found over the years, you know, before I started going into the field, is that you know there's this cycle of like really just bullshit that repeats itself over and over and over again. And so what, what you will what you rarely see me do is, is, uh, is try to, you know, judge something that's real or not. What I do is I go in the field with my partner, Melanie, and we beat the bush until we get results. Wow. And, and so when I show footage, I say, this is what we got. And then you're going to see it in the film. You know what I mean? Yeah. Is it crystal clear? No. But what we do have is corroborating stuff to go along with it. So I stick to my own research, you know what I mean? And what I found is, is that it's not only is it a lot more productive, but I'm, um, people are starting to, to kind of take notice of what's going on because it's repetitive. So there's the anomalous video that we can all go, well, I don't know, and there's a debate about it. And then there's a study, and, and, and it's repetitive documentation. Yeah. Uh, I mean, 
well, I'm talking about 130 films on our website showing these things, doing various things, like in various spots, the same individuals in various spots. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, you're starting, I have members that are recognizing and naming these things because they've seen the same individuals in our films over and over and over again over the past, you know, two, two years and five months that we've been really pounding these areas. But I find that controversy and that aspect, uh, you know, the anomalous video that comes out, I, I watch them and I see the, the differences in what's going on. And is it possible for there to be Sasquatch of that size? Absolutely. They're not hatched from nine and a half foot eggs. They have to, you know, they're, they're born <laughs> and they have to grow. And so when you're in a viable research area, you're going to see small tracks. You're, I, we have infant tracks. I've seen infant tracks and handprints, wow. and we have documentation of that. It's not something that I can't show you. you know Speak, I mean? Speaking of uh, infants, where we run into problems is is, and, and this is prior to uh, you know really our field research campaign and, uh, and and all that stuff is is that you know getting involved in that kind of stuff is a dead end, and so we avoid that like the plague because the bottom line is, is, you know, with our notes of the grindstone, we've accomplished so much. And, uh, and, you know, I always say the same thing, you know, if, if you think that that's not real and you really want to see what they look like, you can always, you know, just go to my Facebook page, man, because there's about 700 pictures. All right, go I mean? ahead, um, go ahead. Give us, your, give us your, 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 your page. How can, how can the strangelings well, check you out? Well, it's just Mark's asking on Facebook, you know what I mean? And, uh, and I think there's an old profile there, but the profile that you'll, you'll, will also pop up is the one with, there's a large female Bigfoot that happened to be about 12 feet behind us. And we have techniques that we use, you know, realizing how these guys behave when, when they're attempting to view you when you're in their environment. So when we started to learn what they're, or we started to adjust our techniques and going after them is not a good thing. We got some incredible footage, mostly in the dark, me getting whacked with branches and knocked on my ass and audio of them growling and that kind of stuff. But the bottom line is, is to catch them on film, you kind of got to play their game and their game is all about observation or they don't eat. So, you know, you know, there's a lot of different things that contribute to why Sasquatch is so difficult to, to be kept on, you know, to be caught on film and why people don't see more of them. But we're doing a good job of documenting them. And uh, you can see plenty of images on the Bigfoot Researchers Journal. That's the Bigfoot Researchers Journal page on Facebook. Or you can just go to Mark Zasky. That's my personal page. And, uh, and I post, you know, an image. Uh, really, they're still frames because we shoot video. We don't take pictures. A lot of people say, oh, you should take pictures. Well, I think 7,000 frames is a lot better than one frame. Yeah. And that's why we shoot video. Right. And we do have tens of thousands of frames of these guys in our videos. We have 130 films, and they're all in, you know, real-time stuff, man, where we're in these areas, and we're, and we're getting messed with, you know I mean? For a while there, I was aggressive, because to be honest with you, I didn't buy... Down. That these things, that they could be this many of them, that they had families of these guys out there, and that there were females breeding with males, and there were young, and all these, you know, there's even old ones. I didn't think this, you know what I mean? I just thought it was all impossible. But what we found with an objective examination and thorough, repetitive documentation is that this this is the case, and and you can see that in our films, you know, and, uh, you know, I look at everything and I, in the controversy and all that kind of stuff, we, we really try to stay out of it because it's our goal to introduce a more serious dialogue on the subject. Right. You know, right. and, uh, and so you don't get question marks. I leave the question marks on the editing floor. If there's a questionable, uh, you know, frames or something like that, I just cut them. I wait until, you know, we have corroborating evidence, like this is what was going on. Like in this last film, a perfect example would be we went into an area that we hadn't been in in a while. And we took a member with us from Miami. She, uh, you know, was just dying to go, you know. So we made an exception because we typically don't do that. But we took her in and, and, uh, and they were in the parking lot watching us. It's way out west and, uh, and, and it's a, a huge, huge area. Uh, that's protected. And so it's not really a parking lot, but it's a parking area that you pull off the road and you have to go two miles back in here on this dirt road and you get in there. And there's this little parking area. It's grass. And there's, you're surrounded by swamp and, and deep bush and woods. And there's a trail. And it's the same trail I saw when I saw when I just explained that to you guys. You jump in the trail, you know what I mean? Right. And, uh, and they were right there in the bush. 
right there. And uh, and so anyway, we're, we're long story short, we go through this whole expedition. We're on the way out, and my partner Melody gets blasted with a rock in the side of the head. Oh wow! And so we stop, obviously, you know, and uh, and then the smell, you know, and so we start shooting, and we caught four or five of them in the bush, <sighs> right there, but less than ten feet from them, from us. And and there were other instances on the trip, and the film is incredible, you know. And uh, and so you know we're, we're looking at that kind of stuff, and uh, and you know and, and showing people stuff, you have to be able, they have to be able to see something. So I leave all of that other stuff on the floor, man. And believe me, I have terabytes of footage that researchers would salivate over because wow. once you know what they look like, once you can identify that archaic human primate bone structure, that 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 you know extremely exaggerated hominoid, you know facial features and they're very easy to spot in your films you know they're they're just very clever and highly adaptive and uh and you know i mean like i said earlier you know if you had to be out there 365 guys uh, you know 365 days a year seven days a week and you were covered in hair and you were huge first of all but not all of them but you know the big ones and and you had to kill things without weapons there are certain things that you would have to master and what we see in the data and what you will see in the films is that they have mastered that. They, they, they have mastered it. And what it, what it entails, I would say 99% of their existence is shut up, sit still, and be in the right place. Because when the deer comes by, if we don't kill it, we might not eat for another week. And that is what we see in our films. And, uh, and, 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 and you can see that. You know what I mean? I remember to see that. And that's why they fund our research, you know? So I have a question for you, Mark. So real, um, first thing, when did you um, – well, I have a couple of questions. Well, I guess the one thing. Um, you mostly research here in Florida, which I think is awesome because that's where I – you know, I, we're based in Florida, and that's where I saw my very – I didn't see my big foot. I heard him. Um, and you definitely, as you know, if you hear one walking through – you know it's it. I mean, saying at least I, I don't know of any creature that can make this much noise and this much strength. Oh, this no, way. it's pretty blatant. Yeah. Um, so, but the question is, is now you've done other research in other states. Um, my question, I guess, is I've, I've always heard or at least thought that the Sasquatch here in Florida are a little bit smaller than their cousins up in the north. For, you know, they're, they're more like six, seven here, where it's like up in Washington State, they're like nine, ten, and even up supposedly and in, in, up in um, – Alaska, they're twelve and. 14. Could you imagine twelve feet? Come on! But I'm, huge, man. so I'm asking in your in your research here in Florida, you noticing that they're more of a smaller than their cousins, per se. I'm, well, you know, it's relative to like me. You know what I mean? I'm I'm just about six foot tall, and I've been in the Pacific Northwest, and and I've been to Mount St. Helens, and I've been to Yakult Mountain, and uh, and all through those areas, and. And, uh, you know, I've been to North Carolina and, you know, all over the South, really. And, uh, and you know, I can tell you that what we have in our research areas are very large. Uh, they're very large, man. And there are some of them that are approaching 10 feet. Uh, what I say is this, is I think that there are environmental adaptations for the mountain Sasquatch that our Sasquatch, which are basically the same species, it's the same species, you just have you know, uh, colloquialisms to identify them, you know, right. regional, you know, names from people in, in these rural areas, you get skunk ape terminology, right. it's, just, it's a Sasquatch. And and basically what I see and what I've heard for two decades now, and eyewitness reports and people I've interviewed, is that, you know, their descriptions are of a much more beefy, much stronger, uh, much more capable, and, and in most cases, larger Sasquatch than typically what you see in Florida. But I, as I said earlier, I think it's an environmental adaptation in, in that they have to live in the mountains. So they're, they're breaking constantly. You've, you've got human beings uh, basically invading all the prime habitat. It's, 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 I need to, you know, I need to have places that I'm comfortable and I can easily make a living. And that's what we do. You know, we, we carve a niche in a place and we take the whole place over. Well, if you look back in those same areas when the Native Americans were there, you had reports of Sasquatch. Well, the early se earlier settlers, if you, you know, oftentimes, if you go back, you're going to see this. These settlers were reporting this. And that's, you know, the, the 1800s and then the 1900s. And they're still reporting Sasquatch. It's just that they come down the mountain at night where they used to stay in these valleys. 
at the bottom where the, str- the springs come out of the mountain. They run down in these pools and all this stuff. Now you got human ho- you got human development. You got homes. You got you know subdivisions. You got all this stuff. And the Sasquatch are seen you know in these same areas, and they are reported larger. I, I would agree that that they're larger. Uh, but I, like I said, I think it's environmental adaptation. They're just stronger. They're bigger. And they have to be. They're going up and down mountains constantly, and the prey that they that they eat, if it's still on the mountain, uh, is is going to be harder to catch. So, you've got a lot of situations. I think where you know the differences are going to be obvious, but mostly a direct result of environmental adaptation. So here's now here's the big question that everyone asks. My wife says straight up, you know, without a body, she doesn't believe, and that's kind of like the 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 senses of everyone oh if you don't see a body we don't believe it's not real all this stuff right so i i, I know the reason why i don't think there's a body um but uh, what is your opinion i didn't like to get your idea uh why we haven't truly found a body yet well i mean there's two there's two we's in this situation i think most people don't realize that there's we the people and then there's we the governments and and departmentalized government and we those people have the bodies and there's 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 been tons of reports. Government. Um, you Gov- know, I go back. I go back, and I always reference I was Anderson's book, uh, "Abominable Snowman: Legend Come to Life." He did a real thorough investigation. I was Anderson. I don't know if you guys know who he was, but he was I one do. of the first yeah. cryptozoologists. Yeah. He was tasked with collecting new species all over the planet for various museums here. And uh, and so, what is that? Well, he's discovering what's hidden. He's discovering new species. That's cryptozoology. Cryptozoology is a well-funded scientific endeavor every year in this country. They just don't call it cryptozoology. You understand? Uh, And it's not associated with Bigfoot. But that doesn't mean they don't study them. And that doesn't mean they don't have cadavers. And one of the things that I would like to impress on you guys, and this is something that you could explain to people in the future, is that you can't have uh, reports coming out of an area from all different demographics of people. Yep. I mean, we're talking about police officers. Yep. We're talking not that police officers are are you know the most reliable witnesses or have the best character, but the demographic. I mean, when people start to dismiss the mother, the father, the sister, the brother, they don't understand these people have family. Yep. These people, ha- some of them had jobs until uh, they saw what they saw. Reputation, and then they become obsessed with it but and when you look at all this stuff and you start going back Ivan Sanderson was extremely I mean he's a real scientist this guy got wind of a report coming from the British Natural History Museum and it turned out and in one instance they were uh, the British when the British were uh, attempting to occupy India let's put it that way uh, they were in the Hindu Kush and at, you know in the Himalayas and all that and uh, they had a base there. They had a, a you know a, a military installation, and they were attempting to wire the Himalayas. And so they sent these giant spools of wire, and these companies of soldiers and Sherpas and the locals and all that stuff. And they were going to carry these wires and transport them over the Himalayas so they could build a telegraph system and uh, and basically conquer the Himalayas with communication. And uh, the party went missing. And a couple of weeks went by, and they weren't, didn't arrive at their, investi- at their destination. So the commander that sent these people there and up there to do this put together a rescue party, a search party, and brought military soldiers with them. Anyway, they, long story short, they found the spools high up in the Himalayas, and they also found body parts. And they continued along, and they came upon a creature, and this is directly from the, the British commander's personal journal. They came up, says they came upon a creature, humanoid, not, doesn't say bear, doesn't say yeti, doesn't say that, it says humanoid, that's around 11 feet tall, asleep under a rocky ledge, at which point, the creature awoke and promptly shot this thing to death. They opened fire, all these guys, right? The creature was brought back to the military installation and, and it was gone over and they describe it. And Ivan Sanderson covers this in that book. It was then shipped to the British Natural History Museum where it is no longer, there's no longer any records of this. But this guy goes into describing the situation where there are actually, and this is a military commander, the last thing that this guy is going to do is pull something like this out of thin air where he has to explain why his soldiers are dead and yep. missing. Yep. 
So, so we have instances where these little, these little diamonds pop out of history for us. It's just that most people don't take time to really put stock in it. Or if you go into officialdom or you talk to officialdom about all this stuff, it, it's what it is. Well, it's a report from 150 years ago or whatever it is. So what do you want me to do? You know what I mean? But if you look at these things, Sanderson also was aware uh, and called to investigate uh, the killing of a Sasquatch. And the guy was taking it to shopping malls. It was the original Minnesota Iceman on display. This joker came through my hometown when I was a kid. And Sanderson got to examine the cadaver up close. It was still in ice. But this man, this scientist, after studying it, was so excited because it was real. There was You could see where blood and pus was seeping from the wounds, the bullet wounds. The eyeball was out of its skull and on its cheek where it was shot wow. in the face, man. And, and, it was, and the blood was oozing into the ice, and it had these streams of frozen pus and blood that were coming up, elevated, wow. where it was sunk in the water, and the blood started to drift before it was frozen. And you could see the the the, uh, the mucus in its nostrils and the hair inside the nostril. This was a real creature, man. Sanderson swore it. The thing came up missing after he reported what he found. Jeez. Within within weeks of of what happened and him, you know, examining this, it's it, it's it's suddenly scooped up. Who knows what? You know what I mean? So we look at this stuff, and this is very typical. And then it comes down to, well, it's probably just bullshit anyway. Well, you know. You, you got to look a little deeper, you know what I mean? Well, let me ask and, you. Uh, let, let, let me ask you a question, Mark. But you sure. retelling that story, talking about that, it reminded me of that story of those Russian students. Remember the Russian students? They, I think they did. Yeah. I yeah. mean, was that a crock, or was that actually something that happened? Because I clearly remember them supposedly. No, there was an incident. So, supposedly, an incident. supposedly the coming across. Was about though, I mean, how can you tell? You know what I mean. Well, they had the picture. Remember, they ca- they came across the camera and they they developed it, and then there was this picture of this. There's, ominous- a, there's a figure, right? Yeah, I mean, this is again one of those situations where you know it's difficult uh, because I don't think any of those guys lived. So this no. is people coming in and they found film and then there's video or you well know, they found they bodies. Brief, they found bodies, but uh, it's suspicious. Yeah, and, and I think the bodies and the condition they were in was even more suspicious. Very, and it, it, it was reminiscent of other reports here from here in the U.S. where trappers in the early uh, 19th century were were being you know picked up by their feet and slammed against trees and. You know, the guy comes back to camp from checking the traps, and this guy's, like, murdered, man. Well, Mark, <laughs> you know I mean? do, do you like, ever... What? And there's huge footprints everywhere, you know. Does this cross your mind when you go out to do these um, these investigations? Of course. Of course. It, you know, it takes... Uh, you carry a weapon. It takes an enormous amount of, uh, of self-discipline to go back. Do you carry a gun? We have. We've done over 300 expeditions in two years. Do you carry a weapon? No. I carry a camera. That's what I carry. And, uh, and what we found is, is what we're dealing with is something that has a very high degree of emotional intelligence. Uh, if you're not aggressive, generally, they're not aggressive. Um, they've reacted in very negative ways if, if I push the envelope. When I try charging in, when we know they're there, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it, it becomes too much and then and we find that we don't want to go back uh so what we do is is we don't push that envelope and uh and you know they want to it, it's just very clear that there's a high degree of indifference to us and they uh you know it'd be like somebody coming in your house and then trying to talk to you you don't even know who the hell they are yeah and they're, you're like this is my house get out of my you know what i mean it's one of those things but it's relative because it's the forest, and not only that, but they've had to coexist with us for eons. Uh, and you know, you look at what's going on, and we've slowly been choking them into these areas. Yeah, uh, I yeah. don't see that as a coincidence, but uh, hey. it does. It does take an enormous amount of, uh, of processing when I review footage like you know what we just saw in, in this week's film. Uh, you know, or when there's incidents, and we have incidents, plenty of them on film. You know, I've had things happen that. 
you don't want to go back. And one of the reasons why we haven't been in this area that we just shot this last film in is because the last time we were in there, they made it very clear that we didn't need to be coming back. And, and so we didn't. And you get that. Uh, I look at it like, you know, there are certain, you know, it's like you would meet any given 20 people. 10 of them are going to be jerk offs. And then the other 10 are going to be mild mannered and then socially, uh, you know, <laughs> skilled. You know what I mean? It's the same kind of, of a dynamic there. You know what I mean? For one reason or another, maybe these guys habitat has been encroached on more and more and more. And they're just a little irritated with the fact that they're being intruded on so much. Yeah. I don't know. I just know that the aggressive nature of the ones that, that are in the area that we call area one it's it's five times the aggression that we see in this other area, and uh, and you know it's it's unnerving at times. So you know we're very careful. We don't go at night anymore. I can tell you that. The last thing you want to do is come with me at night and wear some headphones. With audio <laughs> equipment. I can tell you right now, you'll never go in the bushes again. Wow. And, uh, and it, it's something that for me, I don't like doing it, and Melody doesn't like doing it. And the people that come with us don't like doing it after they've done it once. I'm amazed and, uh, that I'm amazed that I can listen. I can appreciate you're saying I don't take a weapon. I take a camera. I can appreciate that. I really can. But this is the thing, Mark. Do you want to come across that one rogue Sasquatch that wants to? And I'm not saying they do. I'm just saying that suddenly hasn't eaten for a week and you look like a meal, they're going to chase you, they're going to chase Melanie. Wouldn't you want to have some sort of a weapon to, And I don't know, maybe I look at it different. I can appreciate you know, the, the environment and all, but not having some form of protection when you're dealing with the possibility of a rogue creature. I mean, wouldn't you, James? I mean, would you consider that? We talked about going up to Georgia and, and looking. Wouldn't you? I mean, I, I'm not saying that. And you even asked me, would you, if you saw a Bigfoot, would you shoot him? I'd say, no, I wouldn't shoot him. But if the thing's coming at me want, wanting to kill me in an aggressive way, I'd want to have a weapon. I mean, I don't know if I would, you know, try to defend myself with a, with, with a Nikon or, or you know, you know with, a, with a camera, whatever. I mean, I you know, that, so, that, that's off to you, man. I mean, well, you. But I do have a question. Well, though. you know, here's okay. here's here's an interesting tidbit. The areas that we research in are regularly and thoroughly hunted and used for various public uh, activities. And and so when I go in the area, uh, I what I see is I see human beings fishing, and I see human beings hunting, and I see uh, off road. Uh, um, BMX, uh, uh, like long distance, uh, what do they call it? All terrain uh, vehicles, know, ATVs, right? They, well, yeah, they'll use, they'll use those out there, but I'm talking about bikes. They literally have a course that these people run out in this area. And that's why I say it, 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 it's very obvious that not only, and that's not to say that there aren't missing people, because there are in our research areas. You know, you have two people come up missing from two different campsites who did not know each other two days in a row wow. in 2015. And it's within, it's within, you know, a thousand yards, the area that we research. So I don't know, you know, I just know that, uh, that's not from, I'm no way. If the day comes that I can't frequent the areas that I frequented my entire life and I don't feel comfortable without a weapon, then I won't go in anymore. And, uh, and, and that's why I say, I mean, these are areas that I've fished and hunted and, you know, a lot of people are out there doing their thing and they're, they're not carrying weapons. Huh. Sasquatch have just learned to coexist alongside us. And, you know, it's very easy to have these conversations with people who are interested in learning, but it's like you said, you, you were talking to your wife, well, uh, there's no body. I mean, da, da, da. And, and this, this is true from the, the, the public's point of view, <clears throat> but at the same time, when it's that easy to dismiss something that probably, and, and I say that one third of all the sightings only about one third are reported. If you take that, there are in excess. If you take that, that uh, hypothesis, there are probably around 30,000 sightings. About 20,000 of the 30 are unreported. We only have about 10,000 sightings in North America, which they're is still embarrassed, a huge embarrassed amount to of sightings. Yeah. 
But those we're not even we, nobody was keeping track of this when development was happening in the in these areas where the Native Americans were displaced. Nobody had a, a report catalog going on. That stuff didn't start until there were certain incidents in certain areas, and then the U.S. government became aware of things, and that's when you started to see the the uh, uh, the park services being put into into development. Then you start seeing the government step in and buying land land in states against the Constitution, setting it up, and you got natural preserves, and now you're no longer allowed to go in there. And, and and there's no explanation for these. They don't give you an explanation for how you're not allowed to go in these public areas. This is public land, man. This is public land. This is land that belongs, first of all, to the state of Florida. Well, not anymore. And and then you see signs, Pittman Robertson, federal uh, area, natural area, Pittman Robertson funding. And, uh, and, and you start seeing, you know, these areas all over the place, man. If you do research on this. Uh, you're going to start seeing some real clear patterns where you've had sightings and records of sightings. <clears throat> and, and, and this stuff's been going on for decades, man. If you ask me, they've already been dealing with all this, and they're just waiting for the right time to break it to the public. And, you know, I mean, we've done a, a real thorough uh, job of documenting these areas and the Sasquatch that are in these areas, these federally funded and federally protected areas. I mean, I'm walking along... And uh, and there's here's a place where I've been going my whole life. And we pull in, and I'm walking up, and then there's a sign now. It's no trespassing. And, and you're like, what, what's going on here? You know what I mean? Like, why, why is this off limits all of a sudden? And the, the wildlife officers are adamant that, you know, it just had become a, a, trouble, a troublesome area for them. Well, in what way? It's bushes, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's just bushes, guy. You know, and, and, and like, what's, what's, what's the trouble? And they don't want to get into this with you, man. No. You know, when you start putting boots on the ground and you start talking to people, what becomes very obvious right off the bat is there's a great deal of resistance from people with any kind of official type, type of title to deal with the park service. Wildlife officers do not want to talk about this. Do you think they've seen them, uh, a lot of them? Do you think they've seen them? And well, don't talk about it? As much time as we do. Uh, or or I have, then yeah, some of them had experiences. I had people emailing me. I was riding that for a while about these people, you know, because I believe they're guilty of a, of a crime. You know, you can't keep something this significant from the general public and not be guilty of some type of a crime. Yeah, It's a hominoid, man. It's not an owl. Yeah, You know, you're going to go protect all this territory for owls. Well, I think they're doing it. I think they've been doing it, protecting this territory. And I think it's smart that they, they began these wildlife management practices because if these things run out of food, I can tell you they're more than capable of doing just what you said a few minutes ago. <laughs> and and so I look at the situation and, <sighs> you know, I mean, I've talked to plenty of officers. I have people emailing me, man, look, you know, you're right. You know, these are officers emailing me, man. And they're telling me things. You know, I had partners a week ago standing by tracks calling me on the radio to come see them. You know, these people know what's going on. It's a departmentalized situation. And not only that, but you, you, you're you offering up yourself to ridicule and possibly, oh, yeah. possibly uh, an off-the-books rep- reprimand. Yeah. What does that mean? What does that mean? That means maybe they're going to pass you up on promotion yep. is what that means. Yep, yep. And, 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 you know, I've asked these people, what's the official policy on this? Well, we hear about that kind of thing. You know, this is going two months ago. I was in one of the research areas. We're coming out. It's 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night. And uh, I get pulled over. You know, I saw the cat's eye down the road on the front of her truck. It was a female wildlife officer. And I'm like, there's a game warden up the road. And everybody's like, what? You know, because it's pitch black. Well, she killed her cat's, her, her cat's eye in the front. You know, they got this little cat's eye yellow light. And... uh and I'm like, we're fixing to get pulled over. So we go up about another 300 yards, and bam, she hits her lights, and she's right there. It's, it's a one-car strip, man, you know. But anyway, I'm talking with her. She's like, what are you doing back here? I'm like, you know, we're researching. And she's like, what are you researching? I'm like, Sasquatch. And she's kind of giving me the smirk. And I'm like, well, you don't get reports here? I've seen them here, and I know there's reports being funneled into you guys here because I know at least four people that have had, you know, encounters in here. And she's like, we hear about that kind of thing. And I'm like, what kind of thing is that? And she's like, that kind of thing. She said that kind of thing. And she said it a couple of times. She wouldn't come out and address it. She was avoiding it. 
she pulled us over twice in the same night, about a half hour later, but we were already pulled over, but she pulled up and, and acted like she never even saw us the first time. What are you guys <laughs> doing here? I'm like, what do you mean what am I doing here? We're, we just talked to you. It's like they want us out of these areas that are harassing us kind of. But I started, I said, do you want to see one? And she's like, you got pictures? And I said, sure. And I started showing her. She's like, whoa, man, you can see it. And, uh, and she's like, I don't want to see something like this. I don't ever want to see something like this out here. And I'm like, well, you're here. What the so hell are you doing beware. in that position yeah. then for? I mean, come on. <laughs> you want to put your head in the sand. Well, when yeah. you when you mentioned, and and, 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 and and when you were talking about the, the one person that went missing at this camp, one missing at that camp, you can't help but imagine. Oh, I know. You know, and, and you can't help but go off in... That direction and think, okay, because James, well, James, 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 James and I have talked about this before. If they were to come out and say, we have found a Bigfoot, here's the body. We were talking, you know what, every, you know, every country boy from here to Georgia is going to go into the woods with their shotguns to try and kill one to make a buck. Oh, yeah. So, well, here's the thing now, when you say something like that, that's. That's a limited perspective on what they will do. What they will do is enact the Emergency Endangered Species Act. And what happens when every country boy runs in the bushes with a shotgun and tries to shoot one is they get arrested. And the next step is if you do shoot one, you're going to prison. Mm. And that's the end of it. So that argument or that side of it, I, I, I always dismiss that because we're dealing with a hominoid here. Yeah. And uh, and this is not going to go like oh yeah man they're out there how that that's not how it's going to work. And well, one, I can tell you that one state has harassment is, laws, right? One state has well, I forgot which state that passed a law you can't you can't harass a Bigfoot. I, I don't know what state is it, it was. Oregon or Washington. I, I don't. It was, it was one of those states where they actually legisl- they passed legislation and st- and, st- and signed the state the yeah. government you can't harass a Bigfoot. So they're indirectly saying yeah these things exist. Well, there's stuff in field manuals for the U.S. Army, man. I mean, I read it with my own two eyes. Wow. Um, There's forestry service signs all over the Pacific Northwest. When there's a troublesome Sasquatch, and that does happen, what you described is a very real situation. Earlier, when you said something about a rogue, this and that, I had a biologist contact me about, I don't know, maybe six years ago, five or six years ago, something like that. And uh, she was a part of a group that went in and conducted a study for the U.S. government on some extreme vandalism at a, at a state park. And it turned out there was a Sasquatch in the area. And they had, uh, you know, those findings, and they released them to uh, the people that actually were paying for the study, which was the government. And then she even stated when the park was going to be closed, when they were coming in to deal with it. And wow. I can imagine how they deal with it. But the bottom line is, is the park was closed on those dates, and it, and it opens, and there were no more problems a, a few months later. So, you know, you're dealing with situations where, you know, this kind of stuff is going to happen. And, uh, and, it, and like any other wild animal, they're going to deal with it like that. Well, deal with it. Are you talking about going and shoot that them? Way. We're that way. You know? are you, Mark, are you talking about, de- when you say deal with them, are you talking about going in and shooting them dead or tranquilizing them and relocating when you say deal with them i mean well i think i think i think that we you know in my dealings uh you know i was in the military and i understand how the military deals with things so you know i mean are they tranquilizing it i don't know i would i would think that they would attempt to do that because any you know more cadavers to study more a live one i mean come on but that doesn't mean they can do that I mean, we're dealing with something, like you said, in the Pacific Northwest, and this was the area, the region that uh, this information came out of, uh, they can get gigantic, gigantic. Yeah. And, you know, I know most of the world, seven, eight billion people, billion, they don't, they don't know what's going on. So this all sounds ludicrous, but seven or eight billion people haven't seen them, first of all, because they don't live in areas yeah. that they're going to see one. Yeah. Our country is cities. Mostly the coastline. And then yeah. when you go in the interior, it's been developed long enough that these guys have been pushed out further. Yeah. So if, you, if you're if you in a town, you're not going to pull up to your local stop sign and see a Sasquatch standing there. There's a sidewalk. It's, it's ludicrous for you to have an opinion, first of all, about the subject if you know nothing about the subject. 
I always say it takes a moron to actually state an uneducated opinion. Well, that's that's us here. my opinion. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And and, they, and I get that constantly, man. I'm like, you know, people are, you know, I'm like, I, I always say the same thing, you know, when I deal with that stuff. It's understandable that you don't know what's going on, you know? And I get that. If you'd like to learn something, give me a call because yeah. we do know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, 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 and you'd be surprised the amount of people that react to that and they go, you know, you're right, man. You know, what's going on? You know, you tell them, next thing you know, they're signed up yeah. and they're funding our work yeah. because once they see what's going on, they're blown away yeah. and they can immediately see the importance of what this is and what it represents. I, I, I got uh, I gotta say my first introduction and I, and I, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of embarrassed to say was the legend of Boggy Creek. <laughs> So that I was mean, mine too. You know? What was it? That's so cool. I mean, yeah, it freaked me out. No, man. those films, those films are great, man. Uh, uh, it's just like wow. So, uh, real quick, Mark, when was your like? Uh, I've, I've told my listeners when my first time was. And buddy, we got three. We got three minutes. No, no we can go long. Are you sure? I already asked. Okay. Yeah, I already asked the owner of the station. Okay. Let's all. Well, I, I, I was in the subject studying and researching sightings uh, from a time I was fifteen because I moved to Florida. And they were killing horses or attempting to kill horses in the equestrian community that we moved into. Four ranches down, three, four ranches from my house. We had them essentially in the strip of forest that was behind our stalls where we kept the horses, the barn, essentially. And uh, and I never experienced anything then because I was too terrified to go in the woods at 11 hearing these stories coming out of police officers' mouths who were at the people's house. You know what wow. I mean? The following morning. And, uh, and then there's cops with them on your property. That was a big thing in Lake Worth, man. So I was exposed to it early on. Uh, my son, I started expeditions in 2011. And in 2012, I started having experiences where you can't attribute this stuff to, it was like you said, something huge is walking through the bushes. Well, let me get my native, you know, what's native to Florida book out because there's nothing <laughs> making this much noise. You know what I mean? And, and, yep. then, and then you hear... A pig, a wild hog, making sounds like it's, and, and then it's just all of a sudden it's cut off like it just had its neck broken, and there's oh. bones and sinew snapping and popping, and I'm running. You know what I mean? So I was having those experiences in 2012, and then I went to my Aka, and my son actually saw one I walked right out in front of him. We we tracked him, and then we played cat and mouse with him in about a hundred yard thick patch of twelve foot high. Uh, saw palmettos and he was walking when we would walk and then he would stop after we would stop and we caught him several times so I said let's run out and run down and get to the end of this thing because it sounds like he's heading that way so we ran down that way and, uh, and, and here it is he was already out of the saw palmettos and he just backtracked and walked right in front of my son about 30 yards away and it was a monster it was you know he just, his just we reported it he was so freaked out it, it was an excessive eight feet. It was, it was probably closer to ten feet. Jeez. It was beastly huge around the midsection. It was a real Sasquatch, jet black. He got a good four to six second look at it as it walked. It strolled casually, turned its head, looked, <laughs> and just kept walking. And he was like, he made this sound that I'd never even heard of make before. It was this kind of guttural, like, freaked out sound. And I looked up, and he's like, there it is, there it is. And then... I was, he tried to run after it, and I was like, "Whoa, dude!" Yeah, I grabbed his backpack, and I didn't know what he saw, and uh, and I snatched him back, and then we heard it moving off, and then by, by the time I felt safe enough to approach it, it was gone off through the bushes. So he's like, "I said, what do you want to do?" And he said, "I want to report it right now." And so I'm like, "Damn, all right, man." But I was curious <clears throat> to see how the park officials would react, because here I am, I've been studying this, and I know these people know. So we went up to the front, and uh, he, he came in the door charging, man. He was just ahead of me. He's like, I need a pen or a pencil, and I need a piece of paper. I need to draw a picture of something I just saw in your park. And the lady looked at him, and as I was walking in the door, she said, is that thing still in here? He didn't say he saw a Bigfoot. And that's what she said. And then, she, then we were standing there, and she's like, oh, my God, oh, my God. So let me call the biologist. So I'm like, this is happening. You know what I mean? I can't believe it's happening. So it turns out, and this is why I say they know what's going on, guys. They, there are biologists that are stationed in most state parks, if not all state parks. Here in the state of Florida, I think in every one. Every one I've been to, they've, they've been in there. I think it's Mayaka and 
in fantasy. I mean, there's a bunch of them I've been to. Um, but the bottom line is, is this lady knew exactly what was going on. She never asked to see the kids drawing. She never asked anything other than where did you see it? Oh, wow. That's it. And I said, don't you want to see what we, what he drew? And we, you only want to know what we saw. She, she said, I don't need to see any of that. Where did you see it? Oh, she, she confirmed it right there. And I said, you're studying this thing. And then she said, who are you? <laughs> and then she then she turned it on me and started going after me and wanted my information and I was like, hey, I, I, whatever information you got on my little card when I registered, that's what you get. Wow. And she was like, well, I got nothing else to say to you, and then like walked off. You know. Oh my so, gosh! But, but the park people, the park people were were all over us. Uh, the maintenance personnel. Where did you see it? Where did you see it? And uh, the ranger that was in the station knew all about it. You know, she was just like, oh, man, they've been seeing that thing in here. I was like, this is fascinating, you know. So, so, so I real quick. I'm, my my sighting was September 13th, uh, 2013. He jumped the trail right in front of me. He had long human hair. He was approximately seven and a half to eight feet tall. He was covered in silver gray hair. I could see through it. It had it was very thick on his shoulders. I saw every muscle group on this individual. It was thick around his crotch, very thick everywhere else. It was thin hair on his shins. It was real thick. It was real thick on his forearms and his hands. But he was immense. He was built like uh, uh, I always say the same thing, man. He was built like an NFL linebacker times three. Wow! And uh, and he was just a perfect specimen of a man. And that's what I saw. And uh, and then his face, and he stared at me at real deep set uh, rectangular eye sockets. He appeared to be albino, is the way I took it. But now I know more because we've you know confirmed that they basically are achromatically colored, which means their coloration is between black and white, and all those shades of gray. Their skin typically is gray or black. But what that does is it gives them the ability to blend in with the the brush that they're in, whatever color it is. The sunlight will refract off of the green plants onto their gray face, and they will rebroadcast that green. Oh, wow. And these things, they, they will look green yes. in the green bush. They will look brown in a brown bush. They will look black in the shadows, and it's unnatural black. But, uh, yeah, man, hey, Mark, it's really happening, Mark, let and me, it's all real. Mark, let me ask you, if, now I, I got some questions, okay? With, now, it, from it, what is your opinion with respect to do these things get sick? Do they have extreme immune systems? I mean, are they resistant to stuff that we might be susceptible to? Cold, I think, I think that's sickness? highly probable, man. I mean, uh, they've been doing studies on American alligators that live in these environments and the swamps, and how are these things not getting staff? And, and I think that, you know, environmental evolution invariably prepares the species, whatever it is, for the environments that it lives in. We're talking about something that's been around for eons. It's highly likely that their immune system is environmentally evolved, and uh, and I think that that's what it comes down to. Uh, one of the things that I always say is that studying the Sasquatch has made me question the origins of humanity more than I ever have, because what we see is something that is perfectly evolved to this planet, to the degree that it exists symbiotically in these environments. Yet, does it affect the environments? Yes, because it is keystone, but it's a symbiotic relationship. They're not destroying the environments like humans. And so I would say that it's highly probable that they have a highly developed immune system where it comes to existing in the environments that they exist. So real quick, so I noticed, I just found this online, that you actually been to the Mayaka State Park, right? So, yeah, several times, man. Because I, we live we, literally, our, our, our houses are like four exits up from Mayaka State Park. We're, that's where we're at. And uh, it's oh, I we go my family and I go to the Mayaka State Park all the time and it's ironic about three and a half years ago remember that sighting in the Mayaka State Park the guy the kid took a picture of one walking across the the large brush there um, isn't it considered like probably the most important evidence ever 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 uh, caught are you talking about the one with uh, are you talking about the one that's um, uh, infrared in no 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 you're talking that's the Jacksonville one I'm talking about one right here in Mayaka State Park. There was a yeah, kid. There's one in the field where it's yeah. ways off, and then there's another one where it's sitting down on a, uh, against a tree, and it gets up and it comes over and it peeks and it turns and walks off. That's yep. real. 
Yeah, and so we. It's that's, funny because well, that's the exact thing we see. That's exactly what I got footage of in my Myaka State investigation film. Wow! So wow. You know, that's yeah, just man, around. The, I almost, thing, man. I almost, yeah. I almost bought a house that backs up on the on the northwest side of the Myaka State Park. I went to look through the property because the, the backyard was the back end of the Micah State Park Good, out there. Leave the, leave, the, leave the thing a snack. <laughs> so, maybe, you'll, maybe you'll befriend the thing. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm kidding. No, I'm, uh, but, funny, and hey, a, I, I'll tell you this much, man. All it takes is an increased awareness of what's going on around me. I got people that are members and live in Sarasota that have preserves buttoned up against it. and they, they contacted me before they were members, and they've got things going on on the property, and they're describing textbook, uh, you know, Sasquatch signatures, man. And uh, and I'm like, well, do this and do this and do this. And then the next thing you know, they're sending me footage. And That's... I'm pulling them right out of the footage. It's very easy. It's the exact same hominoid bone structure in the face that I see here in Palm Beach County. All right. What, what are your so opinions? they've got them on their property. What, yeah. are, what are your opinions of things like, okay, howl. Maybe they'll howl back. Tree knock. Hit the tree. Maybe they'll respond. Do you think that's just all hype, or are those techniques that really do work? Uh, we don't do much knocking. I have done some of it. Um, we don't, you know, they don't really respond usually uh, to the calling thing, and I think that that's got a lot to do with the fact that they're trying to eat. Um, you can't make a living out there if you're running around screaming and doing all this stuff. That's not to say we don't have audio, because when we first started going in. I was very aggressive. I had a technique that I used to find out if you're there. And it's basically annoy them. And, uh, and that's what we did. And they were annoyed. I'll just put it that way. And they were making very loud screams. But it doesn't sound anything like what I've heard people play. This old kind of thing. I never heard that. Uh, that might be a regional thing. I don't know. That's what, what I was hear thinking. And what you can hear in our films, and, and I can send you a piece of audio, is what sounds like a big... Dude, that's what it sounds like, kind of thing. See, you know? I was funny you know, said or, that, you know, it's, 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 kind of thing, and it's like, holy, whoa, dude. Uh, you know, I mean, you you can. It sounds like a man, you know. It's funny because it that's I mean, what I the found. Audio that we have is uh, is from situations that you know where I heard this guy jump out. He jumped either out of a tree or a huge bush in the swamp at about eleven thirty at night. He was within two hundred yards of us. I heard him hit in the water, but it sounded like there was a huge bush moving before he did that. So he may have jumped from a tree line or from a tree, but we heard very clear footsteps in the swamp approaching us. And I was screaming at the top of my lungs. This guy just responded and we recorded it, you know, and uh, we left at that point. We left because here he comes and, uh, you know, there's nowhere to go. Where are you going to go? If he decides, it's like you said earlier, if they just, they're going to do what they want. It's not like you're going to, okay, man, that's enough. You know, we give, you know. You don't know what's going to happen. This is, un, this is unknown territory. You know what I mean? Yeah. So so we're going, man. So I'm like, leave the audio recorder. So he leaves one up against the tree. This guy, same dude, walked all the way up to the audio recorder and moved the bushes around and sat down behind the audio recorder. And he was there for hours. You could hear him clicking his teeth doing this <laughs> and you, every once in a while you can hear it kind of thing and uh and then you know i mean it's just what it is you know? so these but, things uh, on must his be way up to the recorder he was about 40 yards away he went like this they, you know? and it's very clear audio so so I, it sounds like these things are highly intelligent oh yeah man they respond yeah well, they respond to us now because we bring them apples. They love these apples, boy. Let me tell you something. And we got DNA traps that we put something they like in. I don't want to say what it is, but the bottom line is, is they got to unscrew the lid. And I go in there, man. The lids are screwed back on, and the jar is empty. <laughs> and my last sighting, my last sighting, uh, awesome. well, one of my last sightings was a juvenile. He was approximately eighteen feet from me, and he was on this bank because we research on a levee. It's uh, it's Army Corps of Engineer territory. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, and you know they got we're at zero feet sea level, so they've got drainage canals everywhere. And the Sasquatch have adapted to use this territory for their hunting, and it, and they're and they've got the whole place taped off. So we need DNA traps. Well, I'm standing there, and we're having a, a heated discussion in the bush this one day, Melanie and I, and. Uh, all of a sudden, man, I just caught movement. I looked to my left, and here he is about halfway up the bank. He's about five feet tall. And in the sunlight and the cover he was in, he was colored bronze. 
and, uh, and that's not to say that that's his natural color in bright straight sunlight but he was he had this bronze tint to him and he's looking at me and he kind of was swaying a little bit and i'm staring at him and it was weird because it was almost like in hindsight he waited for me to look away for a split second and then he i caught him floating off very smoothly back down the bank at which point i ran well that individual had our dna trap open he was standing at the dna trap few feet from it and the lid was open and the substance that we were using to get them had huge finger swipes through it and therefore there's saliva in it because he was you don't have spoons obviously so we got dna finally and uh and you know i probably you know put the lid back on but so you know i mean there's nothing but hands out there except people and i can tell you there's nobody there doing this it's them and we've 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 had uh i got two jars right in front of me right now from the, about a month ago, we had an expedition where we left them, and we came back the next day. The jars were gone. Wow! And I'm like, damn. So I started looking around, and back about 20 feet back, there's this huge tree that's been pushed down, and there's a spot where you can see somebody's been sitting there. The bark's all worn off, and both jars were sitting there with the lids on, and they were empty. Oh, screwed back on. Wow! So I got both of those too. I mean, we we've got dozens of them, but those two stand out to me because a lot of times they just leave the lids off, you know. But I wrench them on, so it's not a raccoon or anything like that. Raccoons get something and they chew it, and we've had that. They chew at them, and they get it open, man. They eat holes in it, you know what I mean? But the Sasquatch will unscrew the lid and sit there and eat it. And we well, even had them, when we first started doing it, put the lid. Like, I threw one, and it landed in this water because I wanted to throw it across this water onto this island because we've caught them on film there. And uh, the next day, we go in, and I was spying on him from this position that I thought was secret and I was hidden really good in this bush and there's a little stump there and I was sitting on it we came in and the peanut butter uh, the uh you know shit I just said it the peanut butter jar <laughs> the, the lid was sitting on my stump <laughs> well, I, had, I had from the area busted you busted so so wow. somebody somebody the peanut butter landed in the water well, somebody got the jar out of the water, unscrewed it, ate it, and then took the lid all the way back down to my spot on and the other side, on our side, and put it on my So stomach. they knew you were there. They know we're there. We know they're there, and that's when everything changed. At first, it was like we could screw with the humans kind of thing, and they would do things. But once they realized that we were aware that they were there, the most epic game of cat and mouse has been going on for two years now, and I've gone after them with drones, and uh, and they're fine as long as I don't chase them with it. You can hear them running through the bushes sometimes. And then the last time I, I got a little aggressive with the drone, one of them ran at us, and it was pushing trees out of the way, and so I backed the drone off, and he stopped. And then we, I was kind of worried that we weren't going to get out. It's like one of those situations, you know, because it's a ways in. And, uh, and so but we ended up getting out, obviously, but, uh, so I don't, the aggression thing, they respond in kind. You go after them, they'll come, they'll come at you. Wow. I've had them, when we first started going in there, I was real aggressive, man. There were at least five occasions that I went there by myself trying to figure out if it was them or homeless people. <laughs> Cause I wow. had, to, I had to know because I wasn't going to waste my time. Yeah. And I'll tell you something, man, five different occasions I was running for my life. Because they were coming through those bushes, big, thick bushes, straight at me when I went down into their area and uh, off That's the ledge. And, uh, and that was that. when I was no like, way. hey, man, uh, you know, I'm not going to, first of all, go in there ever again by myself. But second of all, we're not going in after them anymore. We're not doing that. And they backed off. They backed off. And that's wow. when we started kind of bringing them stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, now I know, now I can understand the addiction part of it. Because that type oh, of that, rush, yeah. that type of experience, it would be addictive. Because you would be like, I'm making a connection here. You know, I mean, well, I'm, I'm freaking I'm making out. A- you know what I mean? It's like, man. But then, you know, at the beginning, it was like freaked out. I was freaked out. Melanie, when when we got our first real close experience, we walked in on one at five in the morning. And he was asleep at the base of this levee in a, in a deadfall. There was a bunch of big trees that were all stacked up, but there was a lot of room under it. And I didn't know he was there. Uh, the night before, I got whacked with a branch, and it knocked me on my ass. And I was like, there's something in there, Mel, I'm telling you. 
and uh, and she's like, I could hear him, I could hear him, and I could hear four or five big people walking around. You can't see anything because it's in a canopy and it's after dark. You know, the moonlight's coming through in the film, but I'm shooting film. All this is on film. If I'm telling you about it, I got it on film, and that's the cool thing. All right, where can we see journal, these films? Man. Where can we see these? Tell me, exa- uh, James. Website, write, the, write this. Uh, write know, this down. There's man. a few of them. A few of them are on YouTube, but but our website is cryptoreality.us. And uh, it's members only, man. We we did all that. All right, so know, let's show. I will we just say, all that, let's can you make us? Thing. Can you make us yeah. a member? <laughs> What's that? Can you make us a member? I want to check this out. Crypto. I'll hook you guys up. What I'll is it? Was it crypto? But, what you know, the, the bottom line is, is this, man. Uh, you know what, what I said earlier is, and I have an anthropologist on staff. We we work directly with uh, uh, Dr. William Lester and. Uh, and Dr. Lester has advised us on a lot of this stuff as we've gone along. And one of the things that he said was, the reason I wanted to be involved, Mark, was because you don't have one film. You have repetitive documentation of the same individuals, and it's plain to see. And he's like, this is, I just want in, I want to help any way I can. Wow. And so that's what you're going to see, man. It's repetitive. It's the same situations over and over again. And one of the reasons we're doing that is because I'm a firm believer that very soon I'm going to have the face-to-face confrontation that we've been trying to get. And I don't mean that it's going to be violent, but I mean that it's going to happen. They've walked out in front of me on, a, on several occasions in, in situations where I couldn't get them because the bush is so thick. Or we just got on the trail and we didn't have our cameras turned on yet. And I'm talking about just got on the trail because we have a motto, always be filming. At any given time, we got three cameras rolling, at least. And uh, and so, you know, I mean, this is what you see. At CryptoReality.us, we did the free thing, man. We were giving it all away. And the bottom line is, is we couldn't fund the research. Right. We we have a membership website. We ask for a, a nine ninety nine contribution every month. And what you get is full and complete access to the research team 24 hours a day, man. I lecture in our forum on Facebook. It's private. Um, you get access to all our films and our research because you're directly funding it. And once you start to see what we got, uh, you'll want to interact because you can see the importance of what goes on in, uh, in our work. First of all, I, I, Mark, I want to thank you for coming on tonight. I just I want I want you to think because I know James is over there. You're not gonna be able to sleep tonight, are you, James? You're not gonna be able to sleep. Be honest with you, man. Just, just be honest. Here. So I mean, it, but uh, you've got to come back again. I mean, you you have well, got to. I mean, want, I'm man, I'm looking. I'm I mean, the people in the chat room are digging it. They're just saying you're very informative, uh, you know, very entertaining, awesome stuff. So people are digging what you're having to say. And um, uh, so I thank you, Mark, for coming on. And uh, I'm Absolutely. hoping that James is going to have all your contact information so we can further investigate. Would love to see some of these videos. I mean, I, I, I get off on the videos. I remember the one with uh, where it looks like in the, the, you, you see the, the perspective is looking at these people on the back of pickups. And in the distance, you see like this massive figure lifted infant up and the infant is swinging on a tree. I was like, there's no way. Oh, I mean, there's yeah, one I, more question before we go. All right, all right, go ahead. I, I, I'll end up doing it. But do you think the population of Sasquatch is coming down? They're getting less and less because of our humans encroachment. Um, I would say that we're having an effect on their environment, and I don't see where it could be anything other than that. I don't, I don't see where it could be anything other than that. I, don't, I, I see that I, what we see in our area is that they're under threat, and that's why we're so serious about this. We stepped up our game when we started finding these infant tracks. You know, it was it was Bigfoot. You know, we're researching Bigfoot, and then we we started finding these little guy tracks, man, four inches long. Oh, human wow. type foot man toddlers toddlers <laughs> that cool? that's when it all started to hit us yeah the, the seriousness of what's going on here yeah you know what i mean yeah and uh, and you can't help you know i mean i've seen them you know what i mean in our research area and i know what's going on and and it took you know a few minutes for melody to catch on she was she thought it was ridiculous at first but you know when i took her out and she found an 18 inch track the first time we went out in in one of these areas, you know, the exact area I saw these guys in, it, it, it just dawned on her that, whoa, you know, 
I never thought about this, but this is like yeah. an entire species yeah. that that is being denied acknowledgement on yeah. planet Earth, and this thing has a human type foot. Yeah, and it's like it hits you like a brick, you know. So uh, yeah, man, uh, I, I look at it like they may not be in in jeopardy in an area in most people's areas up in the mountains and all this because there's no corporation looking to develop the land. And I get that these people, you know, are like, Oh, he's trying to, you know, broadcast all this stuff. But the bottom line is, is, you know, in Florida, there's only a certain amount of dry land. And now they have to take the swamp and make it dry. Yeah. And the Sasquatch down here in South Florida, South from Lake Okeechobee, South, the North end of Lake Okeechobee on both sides, East and West only have so much habitat. Yeah. And it's being developed Encroach. at an exponential yeah, rate, upon, man. Yep. An exponential rate, and so yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's serious, and I do see that it, it 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 has to be having an effect on it. Not only that, but the toxins. There were oh, there's probably six thousand. There were five thousand some odd golf courses in the state of Florida. Yeah. That doesn't even count residential runoff. But the areas that the Sasquatch occupy are filter marshes yeah. for the most part. And all of these toxins are rushed into their environment yep. through water management to keep us from being flooded in South Florida. We're yep. at zero, you're at zero feet sea level, man. So there are a lot of concerns, and that's why, why we're taking this serious, and you'll see in our films. Well, fantastic. That is awesome. Uh, uh, Mark, i got to tell you, I mean, I've had an absolute blast. Oh yeah! Thank you, thank you for coming on. James is going to keep in touch with you. Okay, uh, you know we would like to get, get more information. We'd like to pass it on to our strangelings who might want to become members of your website. And um, you know, uh, uh, just I have just had an absolute blast. So thank you for well, coming on. For I, really, me, I, yeah. I, 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 I really appreciate it. You guys send me your emails, and I'll hook you up on CryptoReality.us. So anybody out there who's interested, it's CryptoReality.us. That's our website. It's real easy. You use PayPal, so you'll need a PayPal account because we'd like them to handle all the finances that way. It's all secure. It's a, it's a reputable company. So they handle all that stuff. It's real simple. You know what I mean? Good. Oh, yeah. Good, and it's good. basically, it's like joining Netflix. All we do, all you will see on this site is film after film after film after film. And I spent a great deal of time putting it together. So Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, Mark, listen, you take care of yourself. Stay safe, buddy. You know what I'm saying? And make sure you keep yeah. plenty of apples in your truck. Because I'm thinking <laughs> that know, right? that will be the gift, you know? I mean, when you say apples, I'm thinking, wait, I, isn't that kind of like Harry and the Hendersons when he dug those cheeseburgers? <laughs> you know? I, so Right? I always I always keep one in my back pocket so in case something happens, I can just toss that at him yeah. and try to get away. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Don't eat me. Have the apple. Well, That's listen. Right. Here's for, apple. See you uh, later. On behalf of Thanks James. For me, guys. I appreciate it. Thank uh, you, sir. On behalf of James and uh, myself, you take care of yourself, and hopefully we'll be talking to you soon. Pleasant, safe right, travel. Have Take a good care. night, guys. You too. Bye bye. Mark. All right. Bye. All right, strangelings. What do you say, man? We ran we, over tonight. We, we went over. We went over a little bit. But James, I'm gonna tell you something. That guy was awesome. Oh, it was one of our that, better that was, ones. That was like a fun, I mean, very knowledgeable, has a lot of experience. You follow up with him so we can check out some of these videos, Gabish. You got his contact information, I right? I do, I do. Yeah, I, I want to send an email, too, because, I mean, I'd like to check it out, even though if it's for a month or two, I'll be watching it all the time. And I know you, you'll be watching it all the time. Yeah. You know, so, wow. Well, folks, listen, this has been Strange Things Radio on Cinco de Mayo. Uh, and um, listen, we love you guys. Thanks for everybody for hanging out for the extra 25 minutes. We love you. We will see you um, next Friday. Next Friday. So until then, um, have a safe, blessed week. And James, tag us, bro. Stay strong, folks. Strange things.
dream.